What's up and welcome back to another live stream unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. You can see all of the things that we're going to do today and these will be time stamped in the video description down below in the pinned comment or along the timeline down below, but that's gonna take probably a day or two until after the live stream is done to get all that done. But this will be the rough outline we'll be following. We're gonna cover tons and tons of stuff, testing the laptop, unboxing it, testing the new 18 inch mini LED display in the SCAR 18. Uh, we've got the new i9-14900HX, 14th gen Intel processor that we'll be testing live in 10 different games, as well as some synthetic testing in Cinematch R23 and Time Spy. Uh, and then we've got uh, Pow World today. Pow World. I've been playing Pow World uh, level. I'm level 42 on my main character, but we're going to be playing Pow World today. See how it does in this, you know, super high end laptop. I'm assuming it's hundreds of FPS, but I'm not sure yet because I actually haven't pulled up the FPS meter while I'm playing it and I haven't tried it on the SCAR yet. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we're going to do detailed. Detailed everything about this laptop that you could possibly want to know. We're also going to talk about the top five deals going on right now uh, in terms of which laptops I'd recommend at various price points. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. I'd invite you to subscribe if you like this kind of content and also to like the live stream. And without further ado, let's just, let's, let's just get into it. All right. Jerry says, whoa, SCAR 18, pulling out the big guns right off the bat in 2024. That's right. So uh, this is a review unit that Asus has sent over, I believe, in full transparency. I did not buy this unit. I buy a lot of the laptops that I review, but this is one that Asus sent over. So that means that Asus theoretically could have cherry-picked which one they thought would be better. But as far as I know, they didn't really do that. They just made sure that it worked before they sent it to me, as far as I know. Um, and then, yeah, they, uh, Asus says they're also going to send me the Zephyrus G14 and Zephyrus G16, hopefully sometime this week or early next week. So we should be able to get some live unboxings of those as well. So if you want to look at the specs, here is the specs for this laptop. We've got the SCAR 18 i9. 14900HX CPU. So the one change for sure this year is going to be our CPU performance. I think it might be a little bit more all over the place, depending on which laptop unit you have, because uh, there's all of the laptops that are being sold this year have the same base level i9-14900HX. Whereas last generation, you had the i9-13900, 13950, 13980. And so depending on if you wanted to pay more, you could get a better bend CPU. This year, you can't do that. So the, the all the 1400s are just going to be sent out randomly. And there'll be, I think, potentially 5 to 10% in variation in terms of performance um, between all these i9-14900HX. At least that's my initial first impressions. So not sure how good the bending will be on the one we have, but I would not be surprised if the 13980HX from last year was actually faster than the i9-14900HX in like the slower bend 14900HXs. Um, that said, the, the, the 14900HX has slightly higher single core boost speed, and I'm not sure about all core boost speed, but I in my Cinebench R23 testing, I did not see much in performance improvement yet, but I'm hoping maybe in games we'll see some performance improvement. We'll have to see how this does versus the 2023 version of the SCAR 18, which I also tested in detail um, last year. So anyway, other other specs this laptop has on it. Um, let's see if I can pull the box around if they have the specs listed here. I believe this is... 32 gigs of RAM. Okay, there's the specs right there. And uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. Let me pull it a little closer. So 18 inch i9-14900HX, Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth. Uh, then they don't say how many there's a two terabyte SSD in here. I'm not sure if it's two one terabytes in RAID zero or if it's going to be um, one two terabyte. We'll we'll see when we take the laptop apart, and we'll also see what kind of memory uh, specific modules they're putting in this unit. Uh, that'll be kind of interesting as well. So 
Now, of course, memory modules may change as long as they have the same base speed. Then uh, Asus says it, you know, it's okay as long as it's the same same base speed. Theoretically, though, some RAM modules will be faster than others if uh, certain markets get better or worse modules. Books on stereo. Thanks for being a member. Welcome. Hello, hello. The legend is back, Yusef. That's right. Okay. What's up, Parky? Uh, couldn't wait for this review. Possibly the best premium laptop considering getting it. Yeah, it's this this one's very interesting because uh, the thing that sets the SCAR 18 apart from the other laptops is definitely the 18-inch mini LED display. And it's arguably the best 18-inch display currently available on the market if you're after a QHD Plus laptop display, which is going to give you the best frame rate. And since it's 240 hertz, it's also going to be excellent for eSports as well. So I really, really like that. Um, now, going over any other specs here, it should be DDR5 5600 RAM this year shipped in all the units. And last year it was 4800 DDR5. So this is theoretically a little faster. Interestingly enough, last year they actually did a BIOS update and uh, that BIOS update did unlock 5600 because a lot of the laptops did ship with 5600, but it was just down clock to 4800 on the RAM speed, which is weird. But now, so so if you got a 2023 model, you probably could run it at 5600, but only if you manually activated it and upgraded it yourself, basically, because it wouldn't come out of the box that way. So yeah, um, now I already was hands-on with this at CES and in New York. Um, and I made a hands-on video, but today we're obviously doing detailed testing and we've got a display testing tool as well for the new mini LED display. Let's talk top five deals right now on various price points currently on sale let's go first up we have hp victus 15. i don't necessarily love the victus lineup but it's a solidish plasticky build got a nice number pad here uh, i'm pretty sure it's a plastic touch pad i have reviewed the victus a couple times now but the nice thing about this one 16 gigs of ddr for 3200 ram so you get 16 gigs of ram you get a decent processor with i5-12500H, and more importantly, you get an RTX 4060 for $779. Now, this, from the looks of the display stats on our listing here, the display is one of the worst displays you can get. So keep in mind, the display is going to likely be very mediocre, not very bright, not very colorful, but you're getting a lot of GPU and you're getting the full 16 gigs for 779, which is about the cheapest we've ever seen uh, fully featured 4060. I'm not sure what the TDP on this is as well. So that's another thing to keep in mind, but definitely very cheap uh, in terms of pricing. Legion 5, you get a Ryzen 7 7735HS is our second deal. RTX 4060, uh, 16 gigs of DDR5, so you get faster memory. And then you get a QHD 165 Hertz display, 849, pretty insane deal. Uh, overall, in terms of uh, high-resolution display, 4060, Ryzen 7 8-core processor, faster RAM. I mean, it's a great overall package for 849. I mean, jeez. I mean, as long as you're not expecting to run ultra settings on the latest games, that's pretty much going to do it for you. I mean, it's going to cover you really well. I love the keyboard. I believe there's going to be like a four-zone backlight. Um, obviously, not as nice of a display because it's only uh, 165 hertz and 300 nits. But for 849, that's a really good display. All right, Zephyrus G14, 1049. I don't expect this deal to last too long. Zephyrus G14, Ryzen 9 7940HS, RTX 4060, QHD plus 165 hertz, 500 nits. So absolutely bonkers display, extremely portable. Uh, if you do decide to get this one, I definitely recommend getting, uh, following my optimization guide for the Zephyrus G14. It's a really great laptop when it's tuned correctly out of the box, it can run a bit hot um, in my opinion, but overall it's a, just a really great laptop for 1,049. Acer Nitro 16, you get an RTX 4070 in this guy right now for 1099 and a QHD 500 nits 100% sRGB display as well. This has got a great display. It looks like its status is now out of stock here. Well, not, I didn't think that it was out of stock when I selected it, maybe it went out of stock Actually, from the time I set this up earlier until right now. But we are updating this list daily. So this was the, the latest daily updates um, when I pulled this off this morning. Last but not least, 
the if you're going to spend close to two thousand dollars I think my number one recommendation is probably the Legion Pro 7i in terms of value, if you're looking for the deal. Not necessarily the best laptop around there, just because the display is not as colorful. It's only 100% sRGB. But uh, be sure to use the extra five coupon to get this price of 2049 for an RTX 4080, which is a huge upgrade over the 4070, and the i9-13900HX. So uh, these 13th Gen 2023 laptop models are the deal choice if you're going for the best deal, not necessarily you're going for the most premium because the most premium laptops with the newest and latest features like the new 18 inch SCAR 18 with mini LED display, that's only gonna be available in the 2024 models. But if you wanna save some money, going for a 2023 model on sale is the way to go. Um, Cause the performance difference is just not gonna be that big. Okay, so uh, we are gonna move into our next segment. So we have talked about, we've uh, done the top deals and value comparison onto unboxing the laptop, checking out the power adapter, taking the laptop apart, checking out the BIOS. And yeah, so here is the box. This is what it comes in, ROG. It's the gaming um, sub brand of Asus. And they have, you know, they have a separate team than the, who work on the other traditional Asus laptops. A lot of people may not realize that, but uh, it is a separate team and they specialize in the gaming laptop segment. So let's go ahead and take this, oh, take the top off here. Shaboom, shaboom, shaboom. All right, unboxing this, taking this apart is relatively simple. It's just a matter of grabbing the handle, pulling it, just make sure that the laptop is upright so you don't like, you know, dump the laptop out or something if you have this upside down when you pull it out because it will fall out, that's the main thing. Um, all right, so here is, Here is the laptop. I, I did uh, open this up earlier already and install uh, the 10 games that we'll be testing and update the drivers and Windows updates and all of that already. So let me just go ahead and pull this out. So this laptop utilizes a tri-fan design that is, I think, one of the, one of the very best cooling solutions out there it's not necessarily the most potential performance but it's still excellent it's still truly excellent overall you've got liquid metal conductinot um extreme oh yeah and we got to take we got to take the laptop charger brick notice this charger brick is 330 watts it's relatively small-ish. It's not a big power brick. It's also not a s huge power brick. It's like a medium-ish size. Uh, I'd say smaller than average. But uh, for premium laptops, I think the newer laptops, a lot of them do have a little bit smaller power bricks, like the like the Razer series. Um, it's it's I think a little bit uh, a, a bit better in some of the other brands for the power brick sizing, but it's still quite portable for 330 watts. Here is the uh, exchangeable cab, which you can like uh, swap out on the back of the laptop, right? I mean, where is it? Okay, here it is. So you couldn't actually see it. Almost looks completely invisible, but this, this little guy can swap on to there. So this, I think the biggest thing about this aspect of the exchangeable uh, piece here is that you could color it. You can color your laptop just a little bit differently. Um, especially if you were to actually color this piece itself differently. Uh, Cause you could like paint it, make it blue or whatever, but I don't know. I, I think it's a cool little feature thing, but honestly it's not, not really much point to it. Um, because it doesn't change the style enough to hardly be noticeable, I guess is what I would say. It's like gray to dark gray. Wow, what a change. Um, greetings from Kiev. Wow, Ukrainians watching. That's cool. Uh, your live broadcasts are great, my friend. I'm watching with admiration. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. 
Books on Stereo says, do you think we will see more OLED gaming laptops? Yes, I think so. As long as there's not a lot of controversy around OLED burn-in, I think we're going to see OLED laptops get more and more popular. Okay, so here is the uh, laptop guide, whatever, you know, what you call it. And there's not too much here to really pay attention to, but we'll just take a quick look. Feel free to pause this and uh, read it in more detail if you'd like. You can see there is a Thunderbolt 4 port and USB-C with display port and power delivery, right? So it's very important to note that the USB-C and Thunderbolt 4 ports actually go to different GPUs. So one goes to the integrated GPU, one goes to the dedicated GPU, allowing you to do presentations on battery only mode or like better battery savings mode. Um, which is just a nice feature. Asus is doing that on all of their laptop, uh, laptops. So, um, HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, shows the customizable armor cap right there. Um, and then you got to plug the power adapter into the laptop before you can start it. In search of incredible, we got the little warranty card here. And... Typically, Asus does a 12-month warranty on these, and they're usually international, but it depends on where you buy them. Um, the battery is 12-month, but uh, the warranty applies for the period on the label sticker on the back of the product. So you can see how long the warranty would be. Right here it says 12M, which means it's a 12 month warranty uh, out of the box. And uh, so a lot of these have kind of semi-global warranties uh, on the Asus products, but you have to be in a covered country when it breaks in order for you to get the repairs done. Otherwise you have to take it back to a country that is covered and then you get the repairs done there. Um, they also have a display panel defect policy. This is pretty standard, but usually it takes multiple pixels in order to qualify for the repair. Um, all right, and uh, 90 day extra warranty if you register with the laptop. Oh, and if you register the laptop, you get one year of Asus accidental damage protection. So that includes spills, electrical surges, and accidental drops. That's cool. Um, I also noticed, I think in the Asus, my Asus thing, you could actually extend this, uh, extend your warranty as well um, further out if you want a longer warranty period. Um, okay, so we've got a... That, that obviously is going to cost extra, but they were giving three months extra right there for free, as well as pointing out, so. Okay, so here is the little sticker on the front top of the lid. All right, it says fast, bright, vivid Nebula ROG Net HDR display, ultra high refresh rate, 240 hertz, HDR 1000, so that means it's, uh, VESA has rated this to be to peak over a thousand nits brightness, 100% DCI-P3 coverage, which is the, the most desirable color gamut right now. Uh, NVIDIA Advanced Optimus, allowing you to quickly switch between NVIDIA and integrated graphics. Uh, and you can also switch between NVIDIA only graphics mode or integrated only graphics mode, depending on if you want to save battery. NVIDIA G-Sync uh, enabled on the display to uh, remove any kind of, um, what's it called, uh, frame jutter if you're getting like uh, frame desyncs. So you don't have to worry about that. We'll go ahead and take the sticker off for now. All right, so here is the top of the laptop right here. This is an, a light up ROG logo. You've got Republic of Gamers um, in the little strip going up and down here. Let me zoom in on that, see if you can see it. Um, so Republic of Gamers, you can see it right there. All right. And uh, this 
metal, all right? So you can feel and you can hear the sound of this brushed aluminum. Feels really great, uh, but I wanna make sure everyone knows this laptop is primarily made of plastic almost everywhere else. And there's a, even some translucent plastic. Now there will be a, a light up R, RGB light bar across the back here when we turn the laptop on, but this is what it looks like when the, R, uh, the RGB is disabled. Um, and you can see the laptop right now with all of the lights disabled. You can see that there is some wrist rest oil already starting to form just from all the unboxing of the laptop. We've got a glass touch pad here, which feels really great. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick flex text without all the lights on, which can be a little distracting because the RGB on this is kind of uh, insane. Probably the best RGB implementation out of any laptop in 2024, probably. Wow, basically no flex, very little flex. Like my table is flexing more than the laptop uh, in the corners up here. Um, some flex over here on the left. No flex in the corner again. Just a little bit of flex up here along the translucent top. You can see down onto the top of the motherboard here. Little bit of flex, no flex in the corner. Little bit of flex. Again, no flex there going across the front of the keyboard. Very minimal flex for a middle chassis part of the keyboard. Very little flex, very firm feeling. And this, I gotta say this uh, type of plastic texture feels really good to me. And the nice advantage of the plastic is that it doesn't transmit heat as much as metal. So usually it's more comfortable gaming surface to game on. That said, I do think that CNC milled aluminum chassis feel more premium. Um, and at this price point, I kind of wish Asus was going down the CNC milled aluminum chassis route, but it would probably make the laptop cost several hundred dollars more than this plastic build. So keep that in mind. Now, um, another nice thing about being plastic is that uh, we do have this translucent keyboard deck. So you can see down into the back of the motherboard there. You couldn't do that if it was metal. Um, so some nice design motifs here, but it is very gamery looking, right? It is very gamery. Let's take a look at the bottom of the chassis. All right, so we've got our big rubber rests here. Big rubber rest going across the middle of the bottom, which helps with the rigidity. More rubber rests here and here. Another big rubber rest over here. So that helps with the rigidity of the feel of the laptop as well as bringing in airflow. And uh, yeah, so we've got a triple fan design. We've got one main fan intake here, one main fan intake here, and then a, a fan intake in the middle here that blows air out. Um, and notice that there are no ports on the back of this laptop. It's all fan exhaust, fan exhaust, and fan exhaust. So it's so much fan exhaust on this laptop. It's a really well-designed thermal cooling solution overall for an air-cooled laptop. Um, all right, so I think we should take the bottom of the chassis off. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna need my toolkit, which... Huh, huh. I think I let Carla borrow it. Let me see if I can find it. I'll be right back. And also, yeah. Carla? You know where my toolkit is? I thought I let you borrow it. Okay, let's give our room some like that. Hold on. Uh, do you know where another screwdriver is? A small one? I really need to find one.
<laughs> so I'm not sure where my screwdriver went. Yeah, and thankfully you just need a Phillips head screw driver for this. So it's not going to be too hard, I don't think, to find one that'll work. I don't think I have any extras here. Yeah, it's not. It is not here. Because this is just a regular screwdriver, I should be able to just use this ordinary screwdriver to get it out. I usually prefer using regular tools. Uh, the D goon says, love your channel, by the way. Okay, uh, the Strix Gari team for the Asus has to be the best all around mini LED competitive gaming laptop for 2024. Likely, yeah, I would probably agree with that. It's probably my number one display choice in the 18 inch category, I think, but it's not like so dramatically better than say like the Blade 18. We'll be able to put it, we'll, we'll be able to put it side by side with the Blade 18, you'll be able to see it. Um, it's very similar, at least at first glance, um, but it, it definitely does have better peaks. Toby with $5 Super Chat, hello, good evening. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> I appreciate it. Greetings from Nigeria. Um, Selm, if he, you still have to deal with lottery even with overpriced devices. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna be true pretty much no matter what. Because, uh, you know, no matter what, you're gonna have to deal with the uh, backlight bleed on every laptop. You're gonna have to deal with uh, silicon lottery for both the 4090 as well as the i9 CPU. But I mean, at the same time, they do follow production standards that, you know, it must be this good in order to even get into the laptop in the first place. So. This laptop is definitely better than a smash burger. <laughs> what? That comment makes me think it is someone's from Asus because I went out to smash burger with the Asus uh, marketing team. <laughs> There's like 10 of us at smash burger. When we were in New York. Book on Stereo says, will you review the new Alienware M16? Yeah, I plan to review that this year. It certainly looks like a lot better uh, build than the previous 2023 model, at least in terms of portability. It looks way more portable. I'm curious how good the thermals are on it. Um, by the way, Alienware, they saw my super negative review of the Alienware M18 with the Radeon 7900M GPU. And uh, they didn't like how negative I was. So uh, they were like, we fixed the laptop. We're sending you another one. So they sent me another Alienware laptop for me to test to see if they fixed it. So they must be very confident that they fixed the drivers on the laptop. So we'll do another benchmarking session with the Alienware 7900M. Uh, okay, so now I need something plastic to get in there and pry credit card. That's probably the way to go. Yeah, probably. Mm, Costco card? Yeah, we'll do Costco card so it's no risk of you guys seeing something. <laughs> All right. So uh, notice that this is a pop-up screw. So this one is a pop-up screw. It helps pull the laptop up, making it easier to separate the bottom of the laptop from the rest of the chassis, which I really like. 
Asus does this on most of their high-end laptops. So let's go ahead and pull this apart over here. And, okay, so, come here. There we go. You can hear it popping up. Very easy to pop up, not hard at all. Which is really good that this is such an easy laptop to take apart because I don't have my tools with me right now. But in a sense, that is a very that is very much a selling point of the Scar series uh, and Asus laptops in general is that you usually don't don't need the specialized tools that you might need with another laptop. Okay, we've pretty much gone all the way around, but let's just go down this side one more time. There we go. Easy peasy. Didn't need any special tools this time. All right, now I do want to point out that the front four screws are shorter. See how they have a shorter screw for the front four? You do not want to put one of the big long ones in the front four because you're going to have a bad time as that thing goes through your motherboard or speaker or whatever it's whatever's underneath the hole. All right, into the keyboard deck or something. You know, that'd be very bad. Um... Are the 14th gen Intel processors worth the upgrade from the 13th gen? Eh, nah, I don't think so. I, I think it's pretty firm that it's a no. Uh, if you already have a 13th gen i9, you're not gonna really see much performance gain. You might, as a matter of fact, you might see a performance degradation because um, of the silicon lottery. So let's see here. Um, here is the laptop. Let's evaluate this, all right? So now that I've seen the insides of almost every single gaming laptop, I can definitely give this some kind of hearty evaluation here. Let me go ahead and just, uh, can I, it mutes me if I do that. Uh, let me put me up here for right now. Okay, so we've got a big space around this battery. Um, you know, that is very disappointing, quite frankly. I wish that the battery uh, and this whole area was designed tighter. Like this whole laptop, I feel like could be another half inch or inch smaller, maybe. Maybe. I mean, there's a big display here. The display is kind of what's ballooning us out a little bit. But there is still a bit of a bezel they could, re you know, potentially eliminate. I don't know. Um Around the speakers, you know, they like for example, they could put in better speakers, right? They've got these two speakers here on the left and right. They do sound pretty good, uh, at least last year they did, and but I think they could still be even better. Um, so I'd love to see additional speaker space in here or uh, a bigger battery. I think yeah, it's only a 90 watt hour battery. There's no reason why there can't be a 99 watt hour battery in here. So it could be 10% bigger. Um, let's take a look at the memory. So here is, I believe, our memory shroud. Yes, okay. And uh, traditional normal practice is to unplug the battery before you uh, take out the memory. But if the laptop's off, it's pretty low risk. I'm just go ahead and pop the memory out. All right. So you can see we've got... Uh, let me try to get this a little more stable against the table. My shaky hands. All right, so it's a 16X, or 16 gig 1RX8 PC5 Samsung 5600 RAM, made in Korea. It is single-sided. All right, we got two of those. I believe... It was in here like this, yes. All right. 
Very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and do an analysis of the thermal solution. So we've got our two large fans, left and right side. And then we've got our third fan right here. Notice that the majority of the heat pipes come to an end point over here. So we got one, two, three, four, five heat pipes that end right here, uh, which is basically that that's where the most heat is going to come out and go out of the system. Uh, also notice that uh, we have these, let me see if I can get the light to be a little brighter here. Notice we've got these air channeling foam around the, the air intakes here. So this helps prevent this fan from taking in air from these external vents or like the air recycling, you know, that goes out. It doesn't come back in that way because of these, uh, these air, I guess, foam fins. Uh, and then, especially since we've got another third fan here, it could also suck additional air. So the air comes in here, blows over these, goes out the back here, which is going to help our VRMs, our CPU, and our GPU all help stay cool. Of course, like we said, liquid metal conductonaut extreme on the CPU and the GPU. And uh, we've got uh, our two... Yeah, I mean, from a thermal... From a thermal perspective, I think the only way to make this maybe better is to make it a vapor chamber. But I don't know if a vapor chamber would benefit very much from a third fan. I, I guess the Blade 18 has a third fan and it has a vapor chamber. So I don't know. And it's a interesting, it's a very interesting thermal design. I think it's pretty innovative and interesting uh, from the perspective of how do you marginally improve uh, an existing heat pipe design? And I think this is a pretty good way to do it. Um, now we have a M.2 slot. This is a two terabyte SSD. We have another M.2 and it looks like it's a Samsung brand. The text is so small, it's hard to read it without getting closer. I can't really tell what brand it is. Yeah, it is Samsung. So it's a Samsung SSD in this laptop. Uh, then we've got uh, another M.2 slot right here. So if you need to put in a second SSD, it's totally open and free. You lift up this shroud and you put another SSD and it would just go in here and drape over the Wi-Fi card, which is right here. And the Wi-Fi is an Intel AX211 NGW, which is a, uh, I think the best Wi-Fi card currently. So nice to see that. And uh, yeah, so overall, I feel like ways Asus could improve this year is going to be uh, for for next year from an internal perspective easily they could put in better speakers they could put in a bigger battery and also I could see them adding more ports so like there's room right here in the chassis just to add another USB A or USB C over here um, a full size SD card slot could fit in right here um, I mean, there's quite a few options that they could do to improve the ports on the laptop just because there's so much chassis space. And I feel like they're not fully utilizing all of that to the maximum potential. It's still a very well designed interior. It's just extra space that could make the laptop better if they so chose to invest in making it better. Okay, so that's the internal analysis and taking the bottom off and upgradability. Um, so we have 32 gigs of DDR5, Samsung RAM in here with a Samsung SSD, and a good thermal cooling solution. We're just going to pop this back in place. All right. And when I put these back together, um, I do recommend putting the pop-up screw in first, usually and taking it out last when you're taking it apart. So, not sure. Right, there we go. All right. 
So again, before you screw all the screws in, you want to make sure that you're fully popped in. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to take it apart again um, sometimes to get it fully popped together. Let me do a visual check on this other side. Yeah, we're fully popped together all the way around. So let's go ahead and put the rest of our screws in place again. Um, Daniel McCraig says, if you had to choose between a SCAR 18 or a Titan 18 HX, which would you choose? Um, well, from a raw performance perspective, I think the Titan is going to be better um, in a few different ways, but probably the biggest thing is the Titan has a vapor chamber that's a massive vapor chamber um, and it's rated for a higher wattage pull on the CPU, higher CPU sustained wattage. And so the Titan's performance basically, and in my, I did test this at CES, it can do a higher sustained CPU thing. But in terms of actual gaming performance, like under realistic gaming loads, I doubt there'll be much of a difference between the two. And the display choice on the SCAR 18 is just better. Uh, for me, as a gamer, I prefer a QHD Plus display over a 4K Plus display in terms of rendering requirements, graphical requirements, is just way easier to hit high frame rates, you know, 100, 200 FPS in the latest games at QHD resolution rather than 4K. So, I mean, the 4090 can play 4K games pretty well. But like Starfield is a great example of a game that did not have frame gen support when it launched. And yeah, yeah it was going to, you're going to struggle probably in Starfield without frame gen when it came out, you know, in 4K. Whereas at QHD, a 4090 still could put out 70, 80, 90 frames to make it a good experience. In 4K, it was like 50. And I'm like, I want higher frames than 50. So. Now with frame gen out, I bet 4K could probably do something like 90, 100 frames or something on Ultra. I haven't tested it, but. Um, so I've got an exciting live stream for you tomorrow as well. Uh, we've got the dual 4K ultra wide from Samsung that's uh, 240 hertz monitor. So it's 8,000 by 2,000 pixels, 240 hertz. And we're going to see how well a laptop can power that. I don't know. I might use the SCAR 18 on that tomorrow uh, and do some tests. Uh, and we're going to compare it against the, the monitor I have back here. I have a Samsung. Let me see. Hide this so you can see the lower. I have a Samsung uh, right here that's a 1440p 240 hertz ultra wide. So it's like 5,200 pixels by like 1440. And um, we're going to be comparing those two monitors together and then testing the dual 4K ultra wide monitor. And I don't think we're going to be able to do 240 hertz 4K, dual 4K, with a Thunderbolt 4 connection. We actually need, would need Thunderbolt 5 for that or DisplayPort 2.1. Maybe HDMI 2.1 will be able to do it ish. I don't think so, though. Uh, I honestly, I don't even, I got the monitor. Um, to do the test to see what we could see what we can even do with it. Um, but that's going to be very interesting display. It's like the highest end display I've ever seen. Cause it's also HDR 1000 with, uh, a very fast response time. It's basically the last gaming display you'll ever need to buy in your life. <laughs> as long as it stays working, you'll never need to buy a new one. Probably with it being an eight K basically resolution. Okay, so I put the box down here and we'll plug the laptop in. There we go. All right, and let's see, can we get into the BIOS right away? 
I don't know if we'll be able to. We did. Okay, so here is the BIOS. Um, so we want to review the BIOS options that you have. Uh, there should be some basic undervolting options in here. Uh, this is my understanding. I have not looked in here yet, though. We're going to press F7 to go into advanced mode. You can use a mouse, just using the touchpad right now. Um, but you can see i9-14900HX, 32 gigs of RAM, RTX 4090, BIOS version 312. I believe Asus uh, updated this BIOS through Windows Update automatically and my Asus. It did go through a BIOS update when I got it. I don't know if this is technically the most latest version from their website, though. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, so I pressed F7. This gives us the advanced window. I, you, you can navigate using arrow keys, which is what I'm going to do right now. Um, so I'm just going to go through all the potential options. So going up and down, this is the only options on the main. Advanced window. Going down here. Uh, so you have the... ERP, Advanced Power Management, Enable, Disable, Armory, Create Control Interface Support. So you could disable that if you wanted to, I don't know, use G Helper or something. I'm not sure if that would affect G Helper. Enable, Disable, Hyper Threading, Intel Virtualization. Display Mode, currently we were in DGPU only, which is the GPU Ultimate Mode in Armory Crate. Uh, and we're in that mode to theoretically get a tiny bit more performance. Um, you can keep the efficiency cores and P, so the E cores and P cores, you can toggle them on and off for, I'd say, application um, compatibility. So going over the latest things, AZ, Easy, Flash, 3 Utility, Smart Settings, Network Stack Configuration, USB Configuration, Graphics Configuration, Voltage Configuration. We're going to go to the Voltage Configuration. Core Voltage Offset Configuration Enabled. And here is where we can set our offset. Looks like there's a limit up to 80 millivolts offset. And I'm tempted to just go ahead and slap the 80 mil minus 80 in here in the BIOS. Um, just because I think that it's going to be safe and better for everybody if we do. Um, but this is where we would undervolt it. We would just type in 80 here. Notice that it's set to negative here. Uh, so which means it's going to be negative 80 millivolts or 0 0.08, which is really not that strong of an undervolt. A lot of the i9s can probably do more than that. That said, uh, I have not done many of the 14th gen, and I think some of the 14th gen may have lower, um, tighter constricted in terms of how much they can undervolt or not. So I wouldn't just assume that it can do 80, but it probably can. All right, so we're going to go, you can do fast boot. Uh, so there's obviously, if you want to have two different Windows installs running, you can change this. Um, for security, you can add a password and you can hit save changes and exit. So we did actually did not change anything. Um, so there is the BIOS. Overall for the BIOS support in general, I would say it's like uh, eight out of 10, seven out of 10. BIOS, I've never had a problem updating my BIOS with ASUS. I've had problems updating my BIOS with other brands, in particular MSI. Um, and then I've also had problems, um, depending on the brand, with configuring, say, undervolting or uh, setting certain power limits. There is the display. I don't even think that's at maximum brightness on the display. Uh, so... Notice that uh, we are on, let me see what brightness level we're on. Yeah, we're on low, <laughs> we're on the lowest level brightness actually. So there's the maximum uh, brightness. We'll go ahead and I wanna show you right off the bat the different local dimming zone modes in Armory Crate because it's very, uh, changes the look of the display a lot. So where is it? Standard eco scenario configuration. Q 
Boot up sound. Oh, right here. So, um, this right here, this multi zone strong is probably the best way to do it. Uh, we need to enable HDR mode, it says, if we want to, to change this. So use HDR is enabled. Um, we have to, I think, disable this. Let me disable HDR mode real quick. And now we can set the, the multi-zone. So this is very interesting. If we set it like this, you'll be able to see the differences uh, a bit better probably. So right now we're in multi-zone balanced mode. Notice how bright and dark this is. If we do multi-zone strong, it makes everything just punchier um, and brighter. Like the, the whites get brighter. Uh, if we do one zone backlight mode, uh, notice that it brings up the darks better um, and balances the darks and the whites that are currently on the display. I think if you were probably doing like Photoshop or graphic or video design work, you'd probably want to do the one zone backlight mode. And then if you just want a poppy, awesome visual experience, you probably want to do strong. Strong will probably give you the best like poppy visual. So one zone, more evenly backlit across everything, balanced, strong, and again, one zone, balanced, strong, one zone. So notice how when we're in one zone, we can really see everything on the display better. And I want to do um, three different display tests, if you guys will let me, to go ahead and test what this looks like or how this affects our brightness stats. Um, what about Windows HDR? So if you enable Windows HDR, which is right here, this option, if you turn this on, then you only get multi-strong mode which means that like these whites on black backgrounds are not as um, vibrant or bright, um, but the video modes will pop better. So like if we go ahead and let me go ahead and show you this video, we're in HDR mode right now. Right, and we are in, we're max brightness right now. And is just gorgeous. Is one of the most beautiful laptop displays I've ever seen, um, in terms of color, brightness, all of that. It's just it's really really good. Um, and notice like the the darks are like completely dark because it's mini LED. Um, the brights, like these little peaky brights here, are just super bright and vibrant. looks awesome um all right and now if we go ahead and turn off hdr all right and we'll try it again i don't know if you're going to be able to visually see the difference with the hdr off but like the the peakiness of the image goes down it still looks really good obviously it's still a mini led display but like the ultra brights and the ultra darks, just not as as poppy and contrasty. Not your business with the 50MX. Uh, thanks so much. Says a second SSD with heatsink would fit and be a good idea for RAID 0. Please do undervolt overclock for optimized. Best for games. Love your videos. Uh, we'll probably do the undervolt optimization overclocking in a separate video. It'd be my goal. Um, so that's with HDR off that we just tested. Um, and I do think that HDR mode does make a difference, at least in at least in the video. I'm not gonna say it's gonna make a. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's gonna make a huge difference for everything else, but um, for the video, I do think it does make a difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn HDR back. Well, let's turn it off for right now because we're gonna do the display test with the d display. All right, and let's go ahead and grab, let's grab the Spider 5 Elite. Do, do, do. All my stuff is everywhere. It's probably with my other. Oh, let's see here. Oh. 
Hold on. I gotta find my Spider 5 Elite. I took it to CES and I think I packed it. sure I feel bad not having I should have found all my tools before the live stream started <laughs> it's because of CES this is my first live stream after CES and uh, I feel bad not having it right now with me um, so notice, notice the bright, I don't know if you guys can see this, but notice the brightness of the white goes down when you do the, uh, multi-zone strong, the white net, the, the white parts of the screen get brighter as you bring on darker areas of the display. One zone backlight mode, that's probably my favorite in terms of visuals. Um, if I was using a laptop, I would probably use that mode a lot um, just because it makes the overall image, I think, pop better. Maybe not necessarily the best for um, HDR content, but in the majority of Windows usage scenarios, the one zone looks really, really good. Um, so Carlos looking for the Spider 5 Elite. I don't know if we're gonna be able to find it or not. I don't see it in this room right now. We might have to test the backlight on this. <laughs> I feel terrible. Another live stream, potentially. I don't know. I won't. I'm going to spend one more minute looking for it, and then if not, I'm going to move on. I don't think it's any of these... Yeah, I checked the backpack. Uh. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, I guess, our display test for today because we, we don't have it, we don't have it. Um, but know that the display is awesome. Look at this thing, it looks really great. It is very bright. It is very bright, Brent. Um, I'm very impressed with the display overall. Uh, we will have to do the, the official display test another time. Okay, so we've removed the bottom. We've done the internal analysis. Um, we've analyzed the BIOS. Let's go ahead and talk about the ports right now on the laptop. All right, so let's talk ports so on the left side we have our headset port our thunderbolt 4 is this one uh, and then that's going to go to the intel and then we have our usb c with display port and then we have an hdmi 2.1 an upward facing ethernet port and then our power adapter port we have our left side heat exhaust On the back, as you can see, we have the RGB implementation. 
the ROG logo. And on the right side, we have two more USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s. And yeah, there are no biometrics, Parky. There is no fingerprint scanner and no face ID with Windows Hello, which is very disappointing to me. Look at how bright that screen is. It is very hard for my camera to adjust to the brightness of the display. All right, so plugging it back in. Beautiful. Um, okay. So the, port, the ports, in my opinion, could still be better on this laptop where you don't have an SD card slot of any kind. I would love a full-size SD card slot. I would love one more USB-A or USB-C. Um, there is, I think, an opportunity uh, for them to improve the ports on this, the laptop just because there's so much extra space on the laptop right now, um, on the internals. And I would love to see them do that in 2025. Okay, so next up, let's talk keyboard, mouse, and webcam. So we'll do the webcam first. So camera test. There's your camera and we will record a video. We're recording a video testing. We're typing on the keyboard while we're recording a video. Test, test. All right, and we're going to take a couple photos. All right. So there is the, the display in detail. Uh, it looks a little bit reddish or orangish on the camera, but it doesn't look that way to my eyes. There is almost no detail in the hair. It just kind of looks fuzzy. We have a rather low resolution camera here. The Lumix logo is on the camera is not very visible either. Um, not very impressed with the webcam. I'd give it like a six out of 10. It's a bare bones webcam for sure. Record a video. We're recording a video. Testing. We're typing on the keyboard while we're recording a video. Test, test. Like the webcam will work for any type of Skype or quick business calls or something, but it's far from a high quality webcam. Um, now the keyboard right now is bugged. I have got this working a couple times, but for some reason, sometimes it decides to load up and there is no response from the software controls to change it. So, I mean, this is a live stream and you guys are getting the full deets. We're gonna restart it one more time, see if we can get it. See, now it goes back to rainbow mode. And uh, last time I restarted it, before I started the live stream, I restarted it and the rainbow mode was working fine. And then when I, just now when we got into Windows, it went to all blue mode and I'm not sure what the reason is, uh, why it switches to the blue mode. Cam is just 720 cheapy. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a 720p camera too. It's very, very low, low quality in my opinion. Okay, so let me go ahead and get logged in. All right, so here is our webcam and now we have RGB implementation. It's all rainbowy, And this has got to be probably the best RGB implementation for cool factor, there goes blue again. Don't know why it does that. Driver issue of some kind. Um, yeah. It, the 2023 model didn't do this. I don't know why the 2024 model is struggling with this. Um, but it does look really good, in my opinion. This is a multi-zone RGB right here. We've got the ROG logo up here that lights up, also multicolor. Um, and these lights are very bright, very vibrant, and they look just really good. And the blue looks really good still, but I prefer the rainbow wave. Um, I'm guessing we just need to uninstall and reinstall some kind of driver for the RGB control. 
Um, that's that's about. I'm pretty sure that would pretty much instantly fix this. Uh, but but yeah, Legion Nine I or this more expensive. Uh, I think they're priced pretty similarly, but I think depending on the Nine I sale point, it might be a little bit cheaper or more expensive depending on if it's on sale or not. Uh, how is this year's SCAR 18? I went through two Strix 18s last month. Both had the same issues with the hard drive. Wondering the SCAR would be worth considering. Um, well, it's the SCAR 18 is very similar to the 2023 model this year. So there's very little differences. The big thing is the display. Mini LED, super bright, super vibrant. So that's probably the biggest difference. Uh, feel free to watch the full live stream. I go over all the changes and differences earlier in the live stream. Um, so let's take a look at the keyboard and mouse in detail. Uh, even though we can't see the full RGB effect, we'll have to do just the blue for right now. Um, so let's talk keyboard and trackpad. So the trackpad, it's a nice glass trackpad, very smooth to glide your finger across. You got a decent click. It's kind of a soft click. I wish it was a little bit more firm, but a little bit of travel to the click. Um, I think it's a good tuck. I think it's a great trackpad overall. Uh, not much to complain about. I think that the click could be slightly improved. Also along the top, you cannot click pretty much at all. This is one area where the, the MSI Titan 18 HX, cause it's a haptic trackpad. You can actually click along the top because it's haptic it means it, it's all a vibration motor. There's no mechanical parts. Like this is a mechanical touchpad going up and down. Uh, whereas the Titan 18 HX is uh, the haptic gives it an advantage where every, everywhere is clickable um, with equal pressure as well. Uh, so let's talk keyboard and specific functionality on the keyboard. So we've got an escape key separated off. Notice there's a little gap here. Not all keyboards have that. You have the F1 through four and then a little gap here. I like this little layout making it so that you can know for sure which F key or function key you're uh, pressing. Now you got volume down, volume up, mic mute, fan profile mode, Asus ROG Armory Crate software, volume mute, uh, keyboard brightness up and down, or a key to change the type of brightness that you have active. Then you've got the turbo fan mode, Another turbo fan mode button, which is interesting. There's two of them. They could probably switch this up if on this keyboard so that you don't have to do that. Uh, snipping tool, brightness on the display up and down, monitor change, disable trackpad button, put the laptop to sleep, put the laptop in airplane mode. Then we have our number pad functionality. So we have uh, delete or insert, pause, Pause, break, print screen, system rec, home and end is at the very end, which is interesting that home and end are on the same key rather than the split apart. I don't really love the way that is designed. Um, I would rather have the home and end keys be on separate keys. Um, we got calculator, quick switch button. Notice that we have a little spacing here letting us know where these arrow keys are by feel. I really like that little extra gap to make it easier to tell where the arrow keys are. Um, then we have a pretty much full size number pad. Notice that the zero here is not fat. That might bother some people, but overall number pad, very easy to use. Um, along the bottom here, we have a print screen, another con right control, alt. Notice that like the control key, for example, here, the C on the control key and the L, they're not as brightly lit as the T and the R. And this is pretty common on this keyboard, the C and the P on the print screen here, also not as brightly lit as the S. Um, this is an area that Asus struggles with, I think on all their laptops, they just don't make their keyboards as evenly backlit bright on every keycap. And uh, it makes it, I think, their, their keyboard not quite as vibrant or pretty looking um, as, say, like the Razer keycaps, where everything is perfectly lit across the whole key. Obviously, um, it's an area of an improvement on many of Asus's laptops. So going over here to the left, 
We have the caps lock key with a red light up to indicate the caps lock is active. Overall, the keyboard itself feels good. It's not mechanical. It is got some nice travel to it. Um, this is what it sounds like. Fairly quiet to type on. Feels good to type on. I think the Titan 18, for example, it has a mechanical keyboard. If you like mechanical, that's the way to go for just straight keyboard feel. But this keyboard's great overall. I think it's a, a better layout than my Blade 18 by far. And it's very functional keyboard and trackpad overall with huge wrist rests for placing uh, your, your wrists. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, I think that covers the keyboard and trackpad really well. It's time to evaluate the laptop control software. Unfortunately, like I said, we won't be able to do our NITS color gamut test. Maybe I'll have to post it as a separate video. I cannot believe I don't have that on hand somewhere in here. Like it's got to be in this room somewhere or in my, or in my luggage somewhere. One of the two from CES. Um, anyway, okay. I checked the luggage, I didn't see it in there. Anyway, uh, laptop control software. All right, so there's two laptop control softwares on this laptop. I really wish Asus would just do one, put it all in one. And you technically, I guess, have sound control on another one, but you've got Armory Crate, which is this gear icon. Let me turn the brightness on the display down a little bit so it's less peaky. Okay, so that's only like 30% brightness right now on the display. Um, Armory Crate, uh, I've heard horror stories about Armory Crate on the desktop side of things, but on the laptop side of things, I think Armory Crate is quite good above average. There's also G Helper, which is a third party open source tool that a developer put together to help uh, optimize. I have not used G Helper, I'm just mentioning it as another potential control software option if you run into problems with Armory Crate for any reason. Uh, Armory Crate has nice functionality in that pretty much everything you need to do with the laptop is gonna be on this screen, pretty much. You got your fan profiles right here, silent performance and turbo and manual. You've got your different uh, functionalities like turning on and off the ROG key, disabling, enabling the trackpad, boot up sound. I don't like the boot up sound, so I'm actually gonna turn that off right now. Um, panel overdrive to improve your screen refresh rate response time. You got panel power saver, which is going to uh, switch you from 60 hertz to 240 hertz when you unplug and plug in the laptop to save battery life. So 60 hertz when you're in battery mode. You can change your CPU core configuration. You've got your GPU mode. You can switch it to ultimate mode, which is GPU only mode, standard mode, which is switching between. Uh, and then I think eco mode is Intel only, I believe. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, that's pretty, it's interesting. You have to, in order to change these modes, you do have to restart the system though. Uh, if you want to switch the GPU on the fly, you can do that in the NVIDIA control panel to select uh, integrated graphics or um, NVIDIA graphics card. Um, at least in terms of being able to switch between them on the fly uh, with advanced Optimus. Uh, so let's talk manual control software. So if you, if you go to manual mode to control the laptop, you want to say you want to set it to the highest performance mode possible, you go to manual. Manual mode settings will only take effect after you apply them. I'm going to say don't show again. But basically, with these other modes, if you just click on turbo, it's instantly applied. Click on performance, it's instantly applied. In manual mode, it's not gonna be applied until you go up and hit this check mark right here. Now, each of these top things right here indicate your uh, fan, what fan setting you're on. So right here's your CPU fan, your GPU fan, your system fan, and you got your fan speed settings right here. So 100%, this one's not quite 100%. I'm gonna set that to 100. Uh, and CPU will set to 100 as well. So not quite 100. Um, and 
Very good. So overall, I like this is nice because you could set your power profile uh, fan curve. So if you want your fans to ramp up depending on the temperature of your system, then you can have you can custom tailor your fan loudness to whatever you wish. Um, that said, performance mode and turbo mode work pretty good. Like performance mode will be a mm, little bit loud, not too loud, but noticeable. Turbo mode will be very loud, almost max fans pretty much. And then silent mode is like very, very quiet fans, but also much lower performance. We're gonna go over all that here in a moment when we do our uh, performance testing. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, will Armory Crate work if you're not running an admin account? I think I've used an older version. I had issues with getting settings to stick. I'm not sure, Ryan. I've never tried not using it with an admin account. It's a good question, though. Um, okay, so that's the software. There's another one other piece of software called My Asus, which we can we'll pull it up right here. This is where you can say register your product, uh, upgrade your warranty to a higher warranty with this button, upgrade warranty button right here. Um, you also have some device settings, battery care mode. So for example, you can hit battery care mode on and this will keep your battery to 80% capacity to lengthen the life of your lithium ion battery. So it'll help protect your lithium ion battery from damage. Instant full charge uh, means that it's going to charge the battery to 100% as fast as possible. And uh, yeah, those are the main settings that you need to know about in here, but you also can get your BIOS updates uh, in here right through the software updates right here. And you hit check, it says your system's up to date. So that's why I think I'm on the latest BIOS because BIOS updates will come through here or through just your normal Windows update. Asus does work with Microsoft to deliver major updates right here through Windows updates. So uh, you can get BIOS updates, driver updates, other stuff in here. The only other driver update you'll have to update uh, on your own might be NVIDIA. You might need to upgrade to the latest NVIDIA driver um, potentially. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next segment. Um, fan noise testing with decibel meter. So we're gonna test how loud each of the fan noises uh, is at each loudness setting, which do I have my fan decibel meter here? It's probably with my Spider 5 Elite and my toolkit. Oh my. I don't have that here. <sighs> okay. I want to find my tools and my display testing kit. So let me look for it for a couple minutes here because I know I just put them all together in a nice little pile to take with me to CES and I think I left them here. Checking, checking. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, so I just checked everything again and I could not find the decibel meter, the fan noise testing tool that I use to test the fan noise and the speaker loudness. Ugh, it's driving me crazy. Um, Burner says, yeah, I guess what's the tech top Top tier reviews, hands-on testing for sure. I really appreciate the comment. I just can't believe I don't have these three tools with me before I started this. I feel so silly right now. Like, I don't know where these three things could even possibly be. <laughs> I checked my luggage, I checked my car, I checked the garage, I checked everywhere. Um, second SSD with heatsink fits or is good for the RAID Zero. Uh, so I would say yes, but you, I don't know about heatsink. It depends on what size of heatsink you're talking about, not your business. Um, there's going to be some space probably for a two-sided SSD and then a little thermal heat pad on it. Um, that's probably about all I would do. I don't know, unless you have some insane SSD needs, you should be. AS says maybe Asus hid them. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Um, so, wow, I got 90 people on here and <laughs> you guys are the most patient audience ever. Um, well, at the very least, we can move into Cinebench R23 and Time Spy testing and game testing at the very least. Uh, I asked Carla to continue looking for them Maybe that she'll discover them around the house and we can do the, the follow-up for the, the speaker noise, a speaker test, fan noise, and control software or um, display test. Those three things we're not going to be able to do today. So uh, fan noise testing, we'll have to skip that. Speaker noise testing and display, nits, color, gamut, contrast. We'll just have to do a follow-up uh, live stream for those three tests, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Okay. Cinebench R23. Let's get into that. All right. Okay. So here is the SCAR 18. We're going to raise the back of the SCAR 18 up with a little piece of plastic, which is what I do for all of the laptops. And let's go ahead and scoot the laptop over just a little bit. HW Info 64. We're going to get that going. And then Cinemage R23. Did I accidentally leave them back at CES? I don't think so, but I'll probably, if I don't find them by the end of tonight, I might just go ahead and order a second decibel meter display testing tool and. Uh, Toolkit, because there's got to be somewhere. <laughs> uh, Cinebench 2024 would be good for your benchmarks. Uh, possibly, I may switch to 2024. Okay, so uh, we are going to be in manual mode with maximum fans. We're going to go ahead and save this and enable it. We should have fans kicking on. There's the fans. You can kind of hear them. They're pretty soft right now. All right, so 
You can see our clock speeds right now. 3.8 gigahertz and 3.1 on the E cores. Only 125 watts of power. Something's going on with that. That's not, it should, it should go to a higher power pole, at least in theory. 129, 136. Oh, well, we're maxed on temp. That's why. Because the fans are not running at maximum yet. So 95 degrees on the CPU. We're thermal throttling, which is, which is the reason why we're not getting the maximum power throughput. 27,000. 355 for our first run. Give them a second to cool down. Let the fans fully ramp. You can kind of hear the fan noise. It's definitely a bit whistly sounding. Also, I really want to do some coil, uh, coil wind testing in like silent or performance mode. We'll try testing again. Let's see what we get. So 163 watts of power, 155 watts of power. So we're getting our power limit up big time compared to our initial run. Um, theoretically, we should be able to run more consistently right around the 145 watts of power as long as our temps are good. So... Interestingly enough, our core temp is only 50, 28,322. Like, these scores are not much better, all right, than, uh, than what we've seen in the i9-13900HX. It's right in line, as a matter of fact, with those laptop CPUs. 145 watts of power, which is our long power limit, 139. We're getting close to our peak watts of power for our long at least but we're not getting like 175 like like when i did the titan 18 hx max fan mode it was doing 220 watts through the cpu initially and then throttling down to 180 watts and i mean we i'm pretty sure we saw higher wattage pulls on the 2023 scar 18 not by much it's pretty similar to this but yeah, 13900 HX can also get 30k. Uh, well, that's only with a higher power limit, of course. Um, if you have the same power that we're getting through this system right now, the score would be almost identical, right? And that's 28,185. Uh, like, there's plenty of tests with the 13900 HX where it's only getting like 26, 27,000. For stock, no undervolting, uh, no load line calibrations. Um, but if you let the i9-13900HX run with a high power limit, it should get around 30 to 31-ish thousand, um, which is obviously better than this. It's, you know, so that's why I'm saying 14th gen CPUs they, it's almost like the exact same CPU, in my opinion, in terms of the clock speeds that we're seeing and the performance that we're getting. It's so similar to the 13th gen, at least in Cinebench R23. It doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, that it, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, what, man, what matters more is what the cooling solution's like uh, and how much you can undervolt it. Um, Burak Demir says, perhaps variances between liquid metal application can affect the temps. Yeah. So if we go down here and we look at our core temps, you can see core one is 97 core three is 97. So what that tells me is that we are probably getting thermal throttling only on those two cores. Um, and it's probably from an uneven uh, pressure on the CPU or maybe liquid metal just didn't quite cover that portion of the CPU quite as well.
Because look at the other cores, 79, 79, 79, 80, 82, 93, 85, 77, 77. So the majority of the cores are averaging around the 80 degree mark, uh, except for two at 97. So, so yeah, those two cores are probably triggering thermal throttling on the CPU and causing some performance degradation. So I think that our, our SCAR 18 that we have here is probably not representative of all the SCAR 18s. We've seen similar issues with um, CPU paste and applications uh, with other laptops. Like I know the Alienware M18 that I tested this last year also had two hot cores, kind of like this. Um, now, I want to mention that I did test 29,188. So that's our best run yet after giving it a little bit of a moment to breathe. Um, but still, not great performance. Not a huge improvement. This is, this, this is acting, in my opinion, just like a 13900HX in terms of performance potential overall. Um, in terms of CPU wattage pull, I think ASUS is just a little bit behind the competition in terms of uh, dedicated CPU cooling. Now, the CPU cooling is still very good. I mean, going up to 150, 165, 164.4 watts is our peak. You know, but we're averaging like 140, 130 watts. That's better than the Blade 18. That's better than the Blade 16. That's better than a lot of the laptops out there. But it's not as good as the Legion Pro 7i. It's not as good as the XMG Neo with water cooling. Not as good as the Titan series. Um, it's about the same as what the GE78 from MSI does. So... That said, I think we are being held back by an uneven application to the CPU, probably. 29,072 that time. Let's go ahead and get uh, like six, seven runs in a row without break. And we'll also go ahead and just reset our numbers here. And we'll see what we kind of are going to average for our CPU temps. CPU wattage pull, and our Cinebench R23 scores. Twenty-eight thousand one thirty-four. Exotic says this laptop can definitely do one hundred seventy-five watts to the CPU. It's likely poor liquid metal application. That's my uh, that's my guess as well, Exotic. So LSP, this this laptop currently does have uh, conductor not extreme. So, but it's just probably the application is just probably not good enough. Twenty seven eight ninety nine, or at least not perfect. You know, it's not the perfect application. So after this run, we'll start evaluating what we're averaging and what our power limits and clock speeds are like. Um, 27,800. All right, so we've averaged, well, we peaked at 141. Right now it's 130 watts power pull. Two of the cores thermal throttled. One, three, and five, basically. And I think those are all going to be on the same side. 27,885. Looking at our CPU clock speeds. Let's wait for this to update. Right now we're doing 3.9, 4.2 there. 3.1 on the E cores. 3.8, basically. 3.7 to 3.8 uh, gigahertz on all of the P cores. I mean, that's really not that special. Like, we were seeing over 4 gigahertz on the XMG Neo 16. We were seeing over 4 gigahertz on the MSI Titan, which scored 32,000. 
initially and then throttle down to like 30,500 with the same CPU. But like I said, you also have thermal, um, a lot of silicon lottery going on with the 14th gen CPUs this year. So like last year, 2023 SCAR 18 had the highest bin 13980HX. This year we got the average binning and it's gonna have more variants in it. So there's that as well as the liquid metal application. 27,911 is still an extremely good score but it's certainly no reason to upgrade your laptop from a Cinebench R23 perspective, at least maybe gaming perspective, it'll be better. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, now your business says, are those poor liquid metal applications issues fixable? Would you recommend a return and exchange it? Uh, yeah, I would, if it was my, if I had bought this car 18, First of all, I would buy it from a place where I could easily return it because that's the easiest way to just give it back to the manufacturer and be like, hey, the liquid metal application is not that good. It'll go through Best Buy or wherever place you bought it and go back to Asus or it'll be resold as an open box, one of the two. Um, probably depends on who you talk to. If you tell them there's a problem with it, like liquid metal application is not good, they'll probably send it back to Asus. Um, 27,900 and a 17. So basically 27,900 seems to be our average um, after what's well, been, about, been about 10 runs. And um, yeah, 3.8, nine gigahertz, 2.9 to 3.1 on the E cores. Our temps on average are only like 80. That's our average temp. That's very, very good temps, except for a couple of cores that are warmer. Um, notice that since we're getting into the lower power limits, we're actually not thermal throttling at all. I don't think. I don't think we're ever peaking now. We're pretty much staying around the 70 to 80 mark. Um, actually, no, P core one, P core three, both of those just peaked. So they're still peaking right now. Even though we're in the long power limit, doing less than 145 watts, it's still peaking on those two cores. So, so yeah, I would say that is a liquid metal application issue. And I would, if it was my laptop, I know for sure I would use that extra CPU performance. So I would return it or send it for warranty service if you noticed it after the initial warranty return period. Um, so that's what I was going to say. If you don't, if you don't buy it from a good place to return it, then you can, you should be able to send this back to Asus and be like, hey, can you redo the liquid metal application? And that'll be covered within the first year, I believe. Um, that's my understanding. I'll update the pinned comment if I get corrected by Asus and they say, oh, this is normal or something, then I'll be like, okay, that's too bad. But yeah, 27,788 is what I would say that we're gonna average right in that ballpark or range for our CPU performance, which is right around what an un undervolted 13900 hx gets so basically no performance gains for the 14th gen as far as i can tell and quite frankly likely worse than some 20 than many 2023 scar 18s from a cpu perspective or at least just matching it's like it's like matching i guess is what i would say um okay so that's cinema r23 let's get into time spy and uh, I will try to do an optimization live stream with the SCAR 18 if I have time uh, where we undervolt it to the best of our ability. We overclock it to the best of our ability and we see any kind of performance gains we can have. Um, that said, we'll see if I have time because I have a lot of, I've got multiple live streams that I need to do here. I've got like four live streams. I got a Pimax VR headset that is just an insanely clear, great VR headset. I want to do a live stream of that. MSI Crosshair 16. We got the Zephyrus G14 and G16 for 2024 coming in. Um, so, so yeah. Um, All right, so benchmark, time spy, 
Let's go ahead and do a custom run. No, we'll just do a normal run. It's fine. We'll do a custom run when we're trying to, to listen for um, coil wind noise here in a moment. I would say the fan noise sounds good. It's like just a normal loud whooshing fan noise sound, ordinary. The, uh, but uh, so I, I want to talk about the coil line issue in more detail. And my understanding of what Asus has done to potentially improve and prevent coil line in 2024 uh, so I made a comment about this on my SCAR, uh, on my SCAR series video. I think we might have to restart Time Spy. I just realized Afterburner wasn't running, so restarting Time Spy test. Um, so... So basically, when Asus discovered that there was coil wine going on in their laptops in 2023, they implemented new stricter manufacturing and third party like VRM, for example, like like Asus to an extent they're 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 primarily combining components from different manufacturers onto the motherboard, putting RAM in SSDs, you know, all this stuff. Right. And then they're putting it all together to make the laptop. And basically, they made their quality control testing more rigid in 2023, part of the way through. Um, and the way they did that is by implementing a quiet room with a decibel meter to listen for coil line. And because basically, you know, before they weren't testing for the coil line as much because it was a loud, like, you know, factory environment they couldn't really hear if the laptop had coil wine you know because you really need to be in a completely quiet room to clearly hear it typically um so so basically they implemented this new quiet room testing and they any laptops that failed the quiet room testing would be sent back uh you know for changes or improvements or or whatever so um all right so here we are We've got only 170 watts. We're looking for 175 watts of power throughput on the 4090. Our initial temps right at the beginning here are excellent. 58 degrees on the GPU, 63 on the CPU. Um, now, the tricky part here, when you compare like the results of the SCAR 18 versus the Titan and the XMG, for example, water-cooled laptops, those laptops are certainly overclocking the GPU really heavily out of the box um, and might even be like basically overvolting the laptop technically to get the to go to that high of a GPU boost clock. Because it was like we did the XMG Neo and the Titan. Those ones basically like they do like 2200 to 2300 on the clock speed. And right here we're doing like 2000 to 2100. Our temps here are excellent, but I would not expect as high of a score on this laptop. Hey, 175 watts, you know, 2070 on the boost clock. Keep in mind, we have a slight overclock 50 slash 100 from the manual fan mode already being applied. So without that 50 slash 100, we would be at 9,000 megahertz on the memory overclock, and we would be at like between 1950 and 2000 most of the time here um, for the GPU boost clock. So it's interesting that these other manufacturers are basically getting a big performance boost by modifying the VBIOS basically to be able to push extra wattage through the GPU. Theoretically, it says 175 watts on the XMG Neo, for example, on the Titan, but it's actually, it's gotta be pulling more in order to boost the clock higher into the 2200, 2300 range. Um, 
plus, you know, it's got an overclock plus like an increased wattage to make it stable at that higher boost clock. Um, so 67 degrees on the GPU, phenomenal. 70s for the CPU is excellent. You know, Cinebench R23, I don't think the SCAR 18 necessarily shines as bright as what the actual gaming performance temps are going to be. Hundred and forty watts to the CPU there during the Cinebench R23 CPU test. Twenty one thousand seven hundred and eleven, seventeen thousand one hundred and twenty four. Both of those are very good, but they're like, you know, uh, I would say this twenty one thousand seven hundred is like right at the solid what you expect a forty ninety with a 50 slash 100 overclock to do. You know, if we overclocked this, we could probably overclock the 4090 in this plus 150 to plus 200. We could, like I said, maybe we'll do an optimization overclocking session. I've overclocked, up, clocked, I overclocked a bunch of 4090s last year, probably 10 different 4090s. And almost all of them could do plus 200 to the boost clock, almost. Not all of them stably, but at least 150 overclock with like 500 on the memory now cpu score wise 17,124 is very good um but we've also seen higher cpu scores like 19,000 something from like the xmg neo 16 that we tested at ces uh but that's also with the water cooler so that's not really apples to apples um so 17,124 is very good i think the 13900 hx usually would do around 16,000 but I've seen the 13900 HX do 18,000 too, you know, 18,000 something before, maybe even higher if you really push it to over 20K potentially. So, um, but yeah, this is very good performance overall for gaming um, and is going to be able to play all our games on ultra settings, pretty much guaranteed at QHD. Um, so we're going to go over these games. We're going to start with Apex Legends and look for any ghost uh ghosting oh coil wine test next all right before we do anything else let's do a coil wine test we're going to go to armory crate we're going to go to silent mode to start with all right so silent mode is going to quiet our fans down um coil wine for those of you that don't understand what it is coil wine is when vrm modules voltage regulation modules, when the electricity goes through them and other electrical components, they can cause little vibration noises to occur as the electrical current goes through them. Um, my SCAR 16 that I reviewed last year had a little bit of coil wine. The SCAR 18 had just a little bit of coil wine, not that bad. The Strix G18 had just a little bit of coil wine, not bad. But some, the SCAR, I mean, the SCAR 16, I think, had the worst of the coil wine in my test from last year. And it was noticeable when playing games on, like, silent mode. Before any fans ramp up, you'll hear it, especially in a super quiet room. That's kind of when you hear it, okay? So we're going to try to listen for some coil wine. We're going to do graphics test two in a loop. And we're going to run this. So this is going to engage our CPU and our GPU. All right, so we'd be able to hear it right now if there was coil wine. As it's loading up, the, you know, the CPU right now is going to be engaged heavily as it's loading. And then the GPU is now engaged. I'm holding the mic right over the laptop. I personally hear zero coil wine, absolutely none. I mean, can you guys hear it? Let me get close. Let me get closer to the uh, to the laptop because you really got to get your ear close to it if it's very minor. Okay, I can hear it just a little bit when my ear is against the laptop. When I'm, when I'm at normal usability height, like two feet away from it, I don't hear it at all. Let me close the door here where the fan is. 
Okay, maybe I was just hearing the, the fan, actually. I think, like, the silent mode, the fan runs so quietly. Let's go to performance mode. So we're going to set our laptop to performance mode, which is going to put more wattage through. Mute the speakers. Absolutely, I've seen you mention this saying open Sith S T H on YouTube. I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. I don't like why would there be any noise coming from the speakers? In performance mode, I'm not hearing any coil whine. But I can't hear it because the fans are going loud enough that it's impossible to hear. STH means something. I mean, I don't hear any noise. So we're doing 150 watts right now through the GPU in silent mode, which is very insane. So very high demand going through the CPU. I mean, I would say coil wine's a non-issue on this SCAR 18 that I have in front of me here. Um, because I could only hear just a little bit of coil wine when my ear was like two inches from the keyboard. All right, and I've got no other s noise in this room going right now, so. Interesting, mute speakers while testing. All right, absolutely. We'll try this. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what I'm really testing here, but I will just test this for the fact, the fact that you seem so confident and that this is going to be a problem. I have the speakers muted. We're going to play YouTube, and we're going to listen to the speakers. We're going to listen for any, any noise. I don't hear anything. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't hear anything absolute. Um so so yeah, I don't that's as far as I can tell, no coil wine, no audible issues on this laptop. Let it idle down then launch Diablo 4. That's the coil wine Olympics. Well, um we're idling down right now. That's true. Taking it from like a cool point, like with nothing going on, to it being fully engaged is partially when you'll hear the coil whine the most because like the VRMs aren't as fully engaged, you know? Okay, so we'll try, we'll just try last coil whine test. The laptop's not been running for about two minutes now because we're doing the YouTube audio thing. Um, and we're going to try running Time Spy again. All right, so listen for any coil line. I don't hear anything so far. Still nothing. We're waiting for Time Spy to fully launch here. It's 
Still nothing. Right now would be when we'd be hearing the coil whine. Yeah, this unit does not have any coil whine. What I'm hearing just is the fans at low RPM, just a little bit of whir from the fans. And I got the mic right up to the laptop. Can you hear the fans ramping up? So, yeah, as best I can tell, no coil line at all on this G4, uh, the SCAR 18. So that's really good. Like I said, Asus supposedly changed their whole manufacturing process to quality check for coil wine, and the new Asus laptops should not have it. CM says it's a new laptop, so it might not be prominent. Um, well, actually, I, my understanding of CM is that coil wine can get uh, better over time, not worse over time. But, I mean, that's the first time I've ever heard someone say that it gets might get worse over time. Um, theoretically, like, as it burns in, it might vibrate less is what I've heard from users. But anyone know why the 18-inch scars don't have a version with AMD CPUs? Only comes in the 17 uh, so Ryan, I talked to the Asus rep about that, and um, he basically said that he basically said that uh, they are wanting to um, basically there's Intel and Nvidia are going to sell the most parts. And they had to decide which platform they're going to put the AMD versus Intel parts into. And they decided that the best combination is to put all of the Radeon streamlined the, or the AMD CPU streamlined for the 17-inch chassis size. And the Intel and NVIDIA combo motherboard and everything for the 18-inch chassis side for their, for their manufacturing line. Um, and to keep it separated out. That's basically what they said. So, Okay. Here we are, Apex Legends first game test. We're doing maximum settings for our first test. All right, we're gonna go into firing range. Let's get the camera set up and ready to game. I have not played Apex in a while. Like I said, I've been playing Power World. <laughs> been too addicted to Power World to do much else lately. All right, so we're on ultra settings or max out settings right now. Did it actually save everything? No. All right, so we're gonna grab a bunch of ammo. Okay, so first up, we're gonna do a bit of a ghosting test. Um, so notice that our, our GPU is utilized at 99%, which means we're pretty much GPU bound. 
We're doing 220 to 240 FPS. I just did my averages here. Uh, these are right in line with what we're commonly seeing on the 13th gen Intel CPUs. So, but like I said, we are pretty much GPU bound here. Our 1% lows at 175. Very good performance. The display looks awesome. It uh, is, it's very good. I can tell that we're not quite hitting our max refresh rate in terms of smoothness of view. I'm gonna turn the speakers up. So 235 FPS, 163. Let's go and go to our low settings. All right, and we're gonna go and refresh. Here is our low settings, FPS. I can feel it being a bit smoother now visually because we're getting a higher refresh rate, a little bit higher response time. Our 1% low, interestingly enough, went down a little bit. I'm not sure the reason for that. I'm gonna reset our FPS counter. It, feel, it feels a little bit better than it was So, on ultra settings. I mean, both feel very good. Basically, no ghosting on this display. Everything looks super clear and great for playing Apex. All right, let's go ahead and hop to uh, a gun, gun game lobby if we can, a gun run lobby. CHY says that's really nice sustained TDP. My Helio 16 struggles to hit 200 watts combined, sometimes 180 ish. Yo Gizmo, does the Scary team make the Legion 9 I seem superfluous now? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if superfluous is the right word. The Legion 9 I was very premium in certain ways. Like the Legion 9 I had a fantastic display. It was a great laptop in a lot of ways. It just had like weird performance claims with like the water cooling loop and it was very expensive. I feel like for the money, what we're getting with the the Scar 18 is better than the 9i, though that depends on the sale price for the 9i, so. Byaku says, hey Gizmo, I'm thinking of buying a new computer regardless of price. Which would you recommend? The ROG Strix 2024, the Zephyrus G16 2024. I'm an architecture student. So if you are going to be a student and you need to move it around all the time, then the Zephyrus G16 makes a lot more sense. It's got tons of power, OLED 240 hertz display, and it's going to be super portable. Um, with... With Windows Hello, which will help you log in in a lot of different environments. Okay, so I like that we were able to get into a match so quickly. I've never been on this map before. Someone's really close to me. There's one. I can kind of hear people. Uh, there's two, that guy was AFK. There's some fighting up here. Let's go see if we can kill him up here. Four. Oh, so close. 
Come on! Oh, so close. So we're averaging 294 FPS, 170 or 168 for a one percent low. That's as good as it gets for Apex. Pretty much, at least. We're gonna try to go up to help our teammates up in the top up here. We got the rampage right now. Oh, the L star. Oh, I'm so glad I got over the L star so fast. I really just like the L-Star. Come on. Oh, we're getting shot by someone right behind us. Come on, teammate. I got the R99, which is one of my favorite weapons, and I haven't been able to kill anyone. It's, not, it's kind of a short-range weapon. There we go, we got the Volt here. Another short range weapon. I'm dying, two on one. Uh, Travis says, give him a slip. I just got the same laptop yesterday. I cannot figure out how to customize the lighting or a creator. I can later, in, I can later the lights, but creator nothing shows as an option. That was the same issue I was having, Travis, when I was customizing. I think they need to do a driver update or something. Um, I didn't get to spend enough time with this before. And I think if you just get the uh, right driver update, it should be much better. Oh, close. So our temps in this game are phenomenal. 150, well, 185 watts there for a second. Uh, 165 to 170 watts, 68 degrees on the, the GPU, 80 degrees on the CPU. Uh, FPS is phenomenal. There's no issues. rifled me uh, <laughs> okay so it isn't just me I called support and not a yeah so I'm guessing they just need to do a driver update of some kind but um, to get the lights working like it's weird they, they show only blue right now for me the 2023 model did not have this issue so I'm assuming it's just a 20 uh, 24 like driver update is all is needed probably pretty much All right. We won, I think. So that's good. Wait, no, that's not that's not me. Wolf Squad. I thought usually Wolf Squad's the the player squad, but that is not us. Okay, good game. Excellent Apex Legends laptop for sure. Uh, no issues there. Let's go into our next test. Pow World. Are you ready for Pow World? Um, 
I have not opened Power World on this laptop yet. I hope I don't have any issues with the drivers or anything. I don't think we will. Uh, Sarumi says 4090. Yes, this is a 4090. Travis says, yeah, I went from a 2023 to 2024 since I could return the 2023 at Best Buy. Oh, you got it in December. Nice. All right, so I actually have my own dedicated server. It's just the local IP, but I'm just going to put it in here anyway. All right. Any idea why I do not have the GPU temp and OSD and Afterburner? It isn't an option. Probably update your... Um, Probably just got to update your uh, afterburner to the latest version, most likely. Uh, what should we name our character? Let's just name it Scary Face. Gizmo Slip Test. I would do tech, but I think it's already taken. Okay, maybe not. Let's go. That looks good. Let's go. Yes. No. Yes. Pot belly time. Um, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. Do it. You can't change your character once you make them. So I can't. I just can't do it. Uh. I like it. All right, we'll do all white hair. We'll do the beard. I got a beard, right? So, ooh, 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 ooh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> fabulous. All right, beautiful. All right. The Legion 9i with the same display perform like this. Um, so the Legion 9i has a higher resolution display. So it'll perform a little bit worse than this. Um, for player start location. We're gonna go to the plateau of beginnings. Okay, so first time ever testing this, let's just make sure our settings are correct. It's set to no limit. Let's turn off V-Sync. Because right now we're actually running into a 120 FPS frame rate cap. It's super smooth. <laughs> it's super smooth. No issues, realistically, but it's, uh, I wish, is, I wish there, is there a way to make the FPS go higher? Power World raise FPS cap to two. It says it's set to unlimited already. Interesting, because we're basically not even coming close. We're on Epic. Let's just go native, no DLSS. All right. Now, yeah, hey, look at that. All right, so now we're actually we're actually hitting FPS numbers running native. Our 1% low is oddly only 20. I'll reset. Uh, let's pick up some wood. Oh, hey, they can grab a uh, pal. Oh, that's not a pal spear. Let's beat on this lamb some more. Oh my gosh. 
He did like half of our HP. We got him. We killed that lamb. We punched him to death. He almost killed us, actually. Uh, so right now, 115 FPS. This is epic settings all ran natively. Power World's actually kind of demanding. I'm actually really surprised. And we're about to go to where our base is. Travis, you probably just got to turn it down. He says, uh, I hate to say it, but with HDR enabled gaming at night and the new scar display is a bit bright with the whites. Yeah, it's a super bright display for sure. So yeah, you're going to, you're probably going to want to turn the brightness down a bit. Like right now we're running the display brightness at only a 60%. That's what the display brightness at 100% right now. And we also are, we're not in the, we're not in the multi display mode version right now. We're in like, we're in the uh, single zone display, I believe. Which should make it look better on camera, but maybe not to the human eye. I did, it's fine. It's just really bright, which is good. Yeah, it's true. So here's our base. Looks like... Uh I don't know if we can get in, get in to become part of the guild or not. But these are all the Pokemon, basically Pokemon that I caught. So Power World runs at uh, 95 FPS in a busy base like this. Our 1% low performance is oddly lowish at only 18. The game still looks and plays very smooth. Let's try setting DLSS to quality. All right, so DLSS on quality. Didn't really boost our FPS too much. I don't, it, I can't, without joining this guild, I can't actually access everything that we have there. But let me see if I can build uh, a primitive workbench. And then let me see if I can capture one pal. To do that, we'll need to make a pal sphere. I've actually got five palladium fragments already. I need some wood though. All right, let's see, do we have enough wood to make a, uh, oh, I need to go to the technology page here and we need to select pal sphere. All right, and uh, now can we build a pal sphere? I need more wood. And then we'll be able to make multiple pal spheres. I want at least three of them to give us a better chance of capturing our first pal. Two more wood pieces. Obviously it doesn't work very well farming wood with uh, our fists. Let's go see if we can capture one of these. Ooh, we leveled up. Come here, Gumas.
We're gonna have to punch him a lot. So right now, if we were to throw it, we'd have a 46% chance to capture him. Let's take it down. Six, 88% chance to capture him now. Let's go. We captured our first pal on this character on the live stream. Woo. Okay, so, um, so that's Power World. It's easily doing 120 FPS in most areas. DLSS on quality. Obviously, uh, more areas are going to be, you know, these more demanding areas, like with all these creatures here, it's, <laughs> they're barfing water everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's obviously going to be highly dependent on what area you're in, but this is going to be the most demanding type of area, and we're still doing over 100 FPS. Our 1% lows are not amazing, but it's still very good. Um, so, very good gaming experience in Power World. Let's move on to our next game. Counter-Strike 2. Counter-Strike 2. What was the time spy result? Uh, you can go back in the live stream about a uh, half hour if you want to watch the time spy test. It was 21,700 for GPU score and 17,000 something for CPU score. Are the games playing fine? No leg, right? Yeah, Tyrone, they're playing great. No issues at all. No ghosting. It uh, feels really great to play on this display and on this laptop. So let's go to the game. We're gonna go to display console, yes. And then we gotta go to CL show FPS one. All right, we're gonna go to, I'll show you our video settings, but we should be on full screen, advanced video. It's the default high settings. Let's do very high. All right. Dust to deathmatch, go. So like the GT77, well the GT77 had, uh, I think 22,500, 22,700 is what I thought we got. And we, the GT77 almost broke 24,000 with an overclock, I think. So I think the GT77 did a bit better. All right. So you can see the FPS counter here on the left side. This guy's gonna kill me. Oh, nope, someone from the side did. Okay, we'll just go for about 10 kills. You can see our FPS is Higher than our screen refresh rate, which is the most important si uh, aspect. Ooh. Which is the most important aspect if we're trying to get high quality. Oh my goodness. Op from the side. This has got a scout now. This is brutal without the right gun. Can I get the right gun? Uh, I just want... Let's go for an op. Yeah. Headshot. We're on a killing spree. Let's go. We're doing the murder. Oh no. Uh, the goddess. I still feel like we're doing pretty good, considering I haven't played CS in so long. 
This used to be my jam. I used to play it all the time. So, 200, like, I think we're averaging around 200 and... Or, like, we're averaging between 200 and 300 FPS, but usually around, uh, probably 250. MP5 is so hard to use at a medium distance. Nice. Okay, so I got uh, 12 kills, nine deaths. I view that as a win. I will right, we'll go till I die one more time. Okay, or the end, that's fine. So, very nice. Great Counter-Strike 2 experience on max settings or very high settings. Moving on to our next game, God of War. Here we go. Uh, let's see here, I'm trying to read chat here. Johnny the Rabbit says, Hey Gizmo, I saw your video of CES explaining the new Asus Tough A16 with the Ryzen 9 7845HX. 78 Are you going to review this laptop as well? Or maybe the new Ryzen 9 8945HS Asus Tough version? Um, yeah, I'd love to, Johnny. It's just a matter of whether Asus will send me one. I think that, I think that Ryzen 12 core laptop with the A16 looks, looks really good. Uh, for like a mid-range. One of the best. So we're going to do a DLSS on quality. No V-Sync. And we're going to go to ultra settings. Because, uh, you know, Johnny, if you're looking for like a laptop that has a lot of CPU cores... For, and I'm guessing the laptop will only be like 1500 or something. I don't know. It's going to be such a good laptop. For the money. Okay, here we go. All right, we're ready to go. Here's our test. Ultra settings, DLSS on quality, QHD+. Plus. Looking at our GPU, 162, 165, 170, 173 watts, 174 watts. So our wattage on the GPU is looking pretty good. It went down a little bit there to like 150 for a moment. But we're GPU bound primarily. CPU is uh, looking good. 113.51 for our FPS on average. Um, you know, I think the highest end laptops with, you know, the overclock stuff, it's doing more like 125. So, you you know, this is a little bit behind the ultra high level performance laptops, but this is excellent. And more importantly, our temps are also excellent. 1% um, lows, I feel like could be higher than 51, but it's still very good. You know, for a God of War gaming experience, this is about as good as it gets in terms of like, Playing on ultra settings at QHD. And if you're an adventure gamer, you got to play God of War. If you haven't played it yet, it's one of the very best adventure games of all time. Best writing, best action scenes. It's incredible. Um, I'm so glad they released it for PC. Okay, so that's God of War. Cyberpunk 2077 is next. So Cyberpunk 2077 recently did a new update um, with the new uh, expansion or whatever. I have not bought the expansion. We're just going to do the benchmark today and shoot some bad guys. Uh, so Cyberpunk is very famous for its ray tracing implementation, which is very good. Uh I do think it's an improvement being able to play with ray tracing. Non-ray tracing still looks and plays great. Uh, obviously much higher FPS with the non-ray trace version of Cyberpunk. But uh, with all the cool lighting and different scenes that you have in this game, I feel like playing it with ray tracing is an extra treat, I guess. It's the way to play it if you can. 
Um, so we'll see what we get for our cyberpunk. We're going to be on full screen, 2560 by 1600 graphics, ray tracing ultra. DLSS set to quality. Frame gen. This is a new setting. DLSS ray reconstruction. So ray tracing ultra means that all the settings, all the normal settings are set to ultra. DLSS set to quality. And uh, we'll leave ray construction off for now. I don't, that's one of the new features for the new version of Cyberpunk. It basically, I think, adds extra, more intensive ray tracing, basically. LSP, Phantom Liberty, that's the, that's the name of the new expansion, yes. Steve Onashi, Ray Recon is DLSS specifically boosting ray tracing. We could try adding it and doing a second benchmark. I'm curious how much it impacts performance, if it's significant or not. Right now, 99 FPS on average, 45 for our 1% lows, uh, boosting up to 160, 170 right now, approximately for the wattage. Close to GPU bound, not quite, 95%, pretty much GPU bound, a little bit of CPU bounding maybe affecting us here. Uh, you know, you want a good CPU and GPU to push high FPS in Cyberpunk. Um, looking at this water, I'm trying to imagine what's gonna be like or compare visually with ray con reconstruction enabled, disabled, see if I can notice a visual difference on the image quality. Outside here, there's a lot of NPCs walking around. Usually pushes our CPU to a higher wattage, and it did here, into the one uh, to the 70 to 80 watts on the CPU. Overall temps on the CPU and GPU are looking great. RAM utilization only 14.6, so 100 FPS on average, 29 for our min, but we were one percenting around 48 for our one percent lows. Um, yeah, so 100 FPS for our official measured result. Let's try turning on ray reconstruction and running it again. I'm not sure in 2024 how I'm gonna wanna run it, but in 2023, I don't believe I had ray reconstruction enabled on average or most of the time. This game has a really good story. You should play this game seriously, especially with Phantom Liberty. I have not played the Phantom Liberty storyline, but I beat the main storyline and I did enjoy it a lot. Okay, wow, so ray reconstruction, we're actually averaging slightly more FPS with ray reconstruction, or like almost exactly the same amount of FPS with ray reconstruction. I don't know, let's see what we get in the final. You know, our, our frame time graph appears to be a little more stable with ray reconstruction enabled, so our, that means our 1% lows are gonna be a little more consistent. Okay, looking at the details here. I don't know. It's so hard to tell that re ray reconstruction. Maybe the maybe the reflections look just like a little bit cleaner. I don't know. It's so hard to visually tell the difference here, but I think our FPS actually went up a little. Our 1% low definitely went up from 48 to 64, 63. So, I mean, I guess I would play with re Ray Reconstruction enabled then. You know, if you have the, the choice. 101, and our min is 46, which is definitely higher. So, interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's move on to our next game. It's going to be Hogwarts. Legacy, wahoo! Uh, slice of bread, is there any coil wine? The million dollar question. So we actually spent about 10 minutes trying to suss out any coil wine and I could not hear 
any, pretty much. I felt like for a moment there, I was hearing Coil Wine at the beginning of the silent mode test during Time Spy, but I think it was actually the fans just spinning at really low RPMs. Um, I held the mic right down to the laptop, and I don't think I heard any Coil Wine. I don't think the audience heard any Coil Wine. No Coil Wine, to the best of my knowledge, on this laptop, and Asus did improve their testing in the coil wine department, um, adding a quiet room test to quality check for coil wine. So hopefully, hopefully none of the 2024 laptops have coil wine. Does the keyboard feel hot to touch? No slice of bread, it's very, very, uh, very, very cool wrist rests for gaming. Like it's like, uh, like if I point down here at the wrist rest here, this is completely room temperature, normal temperature, even though we've been gaming now for like a half hour or 45 minutes or so, completely normal temperature. That's one of the reasons why I love the plastic chassis. Um, like my Blade 18, it doesn't get hot, but it gets a little warm on the wrist rests. Uh, you know, compared to this, like this is like literally cold. Like the wrist rest feels cool. Like maybe below average temp. Now we have max fans running. If you don't run it at max fans, maybe it'll get just a little warm. You like run it with quieter fans running. But, but yeah. Did we test see Cyberpunk with path tracing? Uh, we just did the ray tracing on ultra with ray reconstruction. We did not test the path tracing. But yeah, path tracing definitely drops the FPS, I think below 60. Uh, last time I tried it, it really, like it was like, it like cut the FPS in half. Did we? Uh, for Cyberpunk, did we do? Let me check my settings. Did we have frame gen on? Yeah, okay, frame gen was enabled. Just making sure we have frame generation enabled for our test. Cool beans we did. All right, uh, frame gen enabled, DLSS on quality. Frame rate is uncapped. Ultra, 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 on, 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 except for textures. We're just gonna drop textures down to low. You don't really have to do anything. It doesn't, it applies right away. Okay, Britt, see ya. Uh, Johnny the Rabbit says, DLSS mode also shifts more towards the CPU usage because of the lower AI resolution scaling. So I think if you have a lot of CPU cache, 3D cache or fast memory, you will get an even higher boost. Um, it depends on how CPU heavy the game is in general, I think. Um, wow, 184 FPS? Huh? I don't remember this game ever getting that high of FPS on ultra settings. What? Is that correct? Okay. We're gonna do our initial run through. This is Hogsmeade. This is the most demanding area of Hogwarts. Um, so this has the most NPCs, usually the worst load-in stutter issues that, that you can get in this game. And wow. This is amazing. It's performing really, really well. Man, I'm used to Power World. I'm like, why is my stamina not running out? But in, in Hogwarts, there is no stamina bar. You just can run forever. It's kind of nice, actually. Um, a little bit of judders here as we get facing this way, but... Okay, so here's our official Hogwarts Hogsmeade test. Here we go. 168 FPS. 81 for our 1% lows. Oh my God. 
what happened that this is so much better performance than last year? I think last year we were struggling to hit break 100. Like a lot of 4090s were doing like 90 or something. Uh, 90 to 120. Did, did Hogwarts Legacy improve their optimization that much in that time period? Or is it the new 14th gen? Or am I misremembering things? Because this seems like insane. Oh, look, there's a run benchmark button now. Hello. Let's try that out as well. Performing benchmark test. What? That's not a benchmark. It just changed our textures back to uh, to Ultra. That's the only thing it changed. Um, DLSS, quality, frame gen. Wow. Maybe they finally fixed Hogwarts. Yeah, I guess. Like, like let's try turning off frame gen and see if we can break the 240 frames per second mark. Uh, ray tracing. Sorry, not turn off frame gen. Turn off ray tracing. So turning off ray tracing does not appear to have given us much FPS boost. The world definitely looks f not as good without ray tracing. Like the, the the world environment lighting, like look at these shadows and everything here. Let's try turning ray tracing back, back on. Like the little, the, these shadowy effects bouncing off, the the softness of the lighting, it, like it just looks less harsh, looks more realistic with ray tracing enabled. And man, this is playing so much better. Um, so Hogwarts devs, good job optimizing the game. Things are looking a lot better. Uh, load in stutter was better. 1% low was better. Average FPS was way better. Um, also could be related to 14th gen CPUs from Intel, but I don't think so. Maybe. All right. It's time to run Dead Space. This is the game that absolutely cranked the CPU on 2023 SCAR 18. It like cranked the CPU up to like over 100 watts. Todoroki says, are you going to review the Framework 16? I need to uh, I need to get a Framework 16 to test a Framework 16, but I'd love to test one. I actually went to check their website out to pre-order it, and I was like, okay, you can get like a, I think it was a Radeon like 7600S, which is like a $1,000 laptop at most in terms of GPU performance because it's like worse than an, an RTX 4050 or around an RTX 4050 in terms of gaming performance. And the laptop, fully configured with a regular stuff that I would order with a mediocre CPU, not even that good a CPU, was going to be like $2,800. I was like, huh? I could get almost three laptops. Like, if you get it on sale, you could get three laptops that are more powerful than one Framework 16 laptop. And I was like, that's not a good price. I mean, it's a cool idea. But it was like, you don't have NVIDIA GPU options. Right now, at least, you don't. You have AMD only. And uh, unless they updated it from like six months ago when I tried to configure it, they may have updated it. But I want it. I want, I want, uh, I want NVIDIA GPU options up to a 4090. I want Intel CPU options. I can't remember which. It, the CPU is off the top of my head. Okay, so DLSS on quality, ultra graphics preset, QHD plus. Um, here we go. So frame frame time graph, kind of a little bit all over the place. It's per normal. Looking at our CPU utilization, 87, 91 watts is... Uh, 
very high CPU utilization still, very CPU, I don't know if it's CPU bound, but very CPU demanding. 125 FPS as we turn here. A bit of a stutter there. CPU temps are getting on the spicy side, hitting, bouncing off, I think, the 95 degree thermal throttle range. Um, and this is largely, I think, because we're in manual fan mode. This is a game where if you give it a chance to pull high CPU wattage, it will pull it, even if it won't benefit you much for FPS. So like right now, 125, 128, 130. It's getting just a little higher as these NPCs are walking away because it's easier to render. Gonna walk with them here. Very, very high CPU GPU utilization combo right now. You know, we're doing 150 on the GPU, 90 on the CPU. That's 240 combined, which is higher than what Asus claims. Um, okay, so 67 degrees on the GPU is excellent. 95 on the CPU, not excellent. Let's rotate into turbo fan mode. Turbo mode. All right, we're in turbo mode. Let's see what that does for our FPS, CPU wattage, all of that. Interesting. So I think our FPS went down a little bit as we became more CPU bottlenecked because our CPU is now pulling only 75-ish watts. Well, there's 80, 75, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure if we go back to Armory Crate, go back to manual mode, apply manual mode. Now we're doing 100 watts, 90 watts. We're getting, we're getting more performance just a little bit, not much, into the 120s from the teens. But our temps are also going up too, so I don't know. Turbo mode is probably the right, better way to do it, or just like keeping the CPU wattage a little lower using the Armory Crate manual uh, power limits. So here we are doing our benchmark run. I think last year we were doing around this FPS in Dead Space, so not much changed actually in Dead Space. Harambe says, "Do you prefer OLED or Mini LED for gaming laptops?" So the nice thing about mini LED, no burn in and higher peak brightness. OLED, the nice thing about it is no bloom. Mini LED's got bloom and OLED does not. So OLED just has burn in like, cause I, ch I usually sell my laptop once every two years approximately at a minimum. Sometimes every six months I'll switch out my laptop but I really like my Blade 18 so I haven't changed it out in over a year. Um, and uh, so basically with OLED, you probably won't experience any screen burn in the first two years, but after two years, that's when it gets a little iffy. Probably on average, you'll start noticing burn in four to five years. Uh, but the main thing is if you go with an OLED display, you're gonna really want to make your start bar disappear and you'll want to have a dynamic background that switches regularly so you don't run the same background same star bar all the time. Otherwise, I think it's far more likely that you'll run into burn in. Um, so as long as you do those things where you don't have the same thing on your screen 24 seven all the time, I don't think burn in will be as prevalent. Um, okay, so we ended up with 129.47. I think that's a little higher than the SCAR 18 from last year by just a few FPS. But we have seen higher. We've seen like 135, I think even to the 140s for the XMG Neo where they can just ramp the CPU even higher and a GPU higher overclock as well. So very good performance, very solid performance for the SCAR 18. Not necessarily the very best of the best, but solid. All right, next up we have 
Oh, we never ran alluvium. Let's get our alluvium test done. So alluvium is a battle royale, uh, or not battle royale. Uh, it's a battle arena game where you play with Pokemon-like creatures called alluvials, and it's very strategic, really great strategy game. It's uh, in early access, and it runs on the Unreal Engine 5. Has some of the very best graphics that I have seen in any game. And um, yeah, it's, I love the artists. I love the team behind the project. Um, and I'm invested in Alluvium. Uh, I actually put some of my own money into it. But uh, it's got a... It's a really, it's a really fun game, um, and lots of potential. You'll, when the game actually launches later this year, you'll be able to own the assets that you collect in the game. So it's like a collector's game uh, that you'll be able to trade and battle the assets that you capture. So that's that's one of the main reasons I love it. It's kind of like a digital version of the Pokemon. Uh, that's more like an adult version with like really high end graphics. And, uh, and like I said, asset ownership, which usually you, you can't, you know, have asset ownership. So, um, let's just do a survival match. So survival is against the computer. I mean, I could do a ranked, but I don't want to do ranked <laughs> because... I would end up losing losing all of my ranked points if I lose. So, okay. So uh, the way the way arena works is you have 150 mastery points, and each of these alluvials costs certain amounts of mastery. So like this one costs 100. It's a really high end alluvial. Um, but if what your goal is is to win the fight with the lowest end alluvial you can. So right here, this is an earth alluvial. So another. Water alluvial is probably the way to win. Um, so we're going to do Axodon here, or uh, Axon, and water counters Earth. So we should win this fight, I think. And then whatever mastery points you have left over during arena, like it'll you'll get like a ten percent, I think, bonus based on the interest that you uh, you gain from each round. So you want to use as few alluvials as possible and as few mastery points as possible to stack up and gain more and more uh, mastery points so that you can prepare for the end game. So these are plant guys. And they, wow, well, we're doing 144 FPS solid and only 50% GPU utilization. Um, so plant guys suck against fire. So we'll put this fire dude in, the DACA, which is a really powerful. Like the, the details on these guys that on the hair, on everything is looks so good. And the creatures are just really cute. Like they're way cuter than the pals from the pal pal world, I think. But they, uh, yeah. Like pal world's like a great casual game, easy to get your friends into. This one's gonna be a bit more of a serious strategy game, I think. I hope we win this. I, my guy just went hyper, which is this yellow bar. If you counter your opponents, your guys will go hyper. Is the way it works. So, okay, so we got phosphorus, earth dominant, which means we want to go water. Um, I think ripe lance is going to be a great choice. So this uh, scorpion guy has got a water dominant versus earth dominant. So we should get hyper uh, as they fight. And you also do bonus damage if you counter the affinity of the enemy alluvial. Yes, I think we're going to win this. Perfect. Back to nothing. 
We'll do one more wave before we move on. Um, and we'll do the, uh, we'll do a little bit of overworld where we go capture alluvials. Let's just go ahead and do the overworld now. Actually, shoot, let's just beat these guys. So we got, uh, this guy is a twine and Goliath. So this guy's going to be nature. This guy's going to be earth. It's kind of tough to counter both. I think we'll do water against this guy and we'll do fire against this guy. And we'll have them attack the ranger first. That should be a pretty good matchup. We had a bit of a stutter, frame time stutter right there. Overall, the frame time graph and performance is looking really good though. Occasional, yeah, when, we're, when our abilities are going off, we're getting occasional blips. I think we have a frame rate cap set to 144. I don't think we can go above that. Oh, we can turn it off. Okay, so now we're getting no frame rate cap into the 180 FPS range. Nice. So let's go ahead and go abandon. And let's go back to overworld. Where and we'll try to we'll try to just explore overworld for like a minute and see what the FPS is like now. Uh wait. Yes, there's overworld. Okay. So overworld is super early access. Uh they're still working on updating overworld a lot. Lebroni, you mean Pow World? Did I say I might? I may have mixed up the games because I'm we're talking about Pokemon, we're talking about Pow World, and then we're talking about Alluvium. So, I, I I was talking about Pow World compared to Alluvium, a little bit. RC Chan asks, when are you going to get the new G14, G16 in for review? Hopefully before the end of January. Um, it was supposed to come like this week, but it hadn't arrived yet. So, all right, let's check our settings let's go to full screen as well i think full screen will probably perform a little better um frame rate cap off graphics let's put dlss on quality and we're on epic graphics settings for everything so here we are in the Alluvium overworld. This is, I think, the coolest section of the world. The game needs optimization. You can see as all the assets load in, we get quite a few frame time stutters. But this game is just gorgeous. So you can, uh, you can sprint, you can slide, you can jump. You can use jet jets to build momentum to move really fast through the world. Now, uh, when you're out here in the world, you can collect resources, including um, ores. You can jetpack across. You can collect these plants. There's tons of different plants, like hundreds of different types of plants that they're going to have. I pressed the wrong button. I pressed the F key. And uh, the different plants will give you essences that you'll need to uh, get upgrades on your guy. And we're going to just run up here. Seems to be running better now. Like our 1% lows seems to be a lot better than three. Like I said, this game is super early access. Come back. No, okay, we gotta wait for the next bubble. Um, but 103 FPS on average is, I think, really uh, gonna be a great playable experience for Epic settings. I just think they need to get, I don't know, asset engine optimization more in line because right now it is a bit, uh, as assets get loaded in, it just causes a lot of stutters, you know? So 109 FPS, 110. I see an alluvial, two alluvial portals down here. Let's see if we can go cap one of those. 
So we can wingsuit over here and then uh, let's go ahead and hit this and see what kind of alluvials are in this. Okay, I would love to capture that rota. I don't know if this still has all my alluvials from when I normally fight. Let's see. Can you mention the review embargo for the G14, G16? As far as I know, as soon as I get it, I can review it. There's no um, set review embargo that I know of. Um, so we're gonna want to do... Is that gonna be enough to beat this? I'm gonna do one more guy. So the more guys you put on the board, right? They cost 25 each. And I, these are the capture bar up here. The more the bar comes in, the less chances you'll have to capture alluvials if you win the fight. So you wanna win it as efficiently as possible. I probably could have put one less guy, honestly. But I really want to try to capture this Rota. He's like one of the best characters, one of my favorites. Oh, okay, I'm really glad I did not do any less characters because wow, the Rota is. Yo! <laughs> Down to just like 20 HP. Okay, uh, let's try to capture this Rota. We'll go with a rare shard. So in the final game, each creature will have its own stats. And um, so like health, attack, all that will be variant. And so each time you capture one, you'll get slightly better or worse stats, which is relevant for, you know, if you're trying to capture the very, very best for PVP purposes later on. So I managed to capture him. And in the final game, when you capture these Pokemon or these alluvials, they'll be, they'll create, be the, these creatures will be created as assets on the blockchain, so that way you can trade and sell them at a later time. Um, you can also fuse them and create like upgraded versions, like the Revo and Gyro here. You can see upgraded versions of them. Um, but this is a really good alluvial, so I'm glad I caught it. Let's see if we can get one of the Kukas as well. Like, when I compare this to PAL World, like the graphics in this game are just so much better than PAL World in terms of a design perspective. But uh, PAL World's got the cuteness factor. Well, I mean, this has cuteness factor too, but I don't know. Like I, I like Alluvium so much more than PAL World, but PAL World's great for like really casual gameplay. All right, so we're gonna exit. Uh, managed to capture two Alluvials that round. Feel pretty good about that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's alluvium. I feel I feel like that's a pretty good demonstration of alluvium. Gather resources, capture creatures, PVP, battle them against other players. Uh, and it's gonna come out later this year, I think around March or April is the goal time frame for the official open beta where anyone can play and capture and the creatures will be permanently on the blockchain. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and exit Alluvium and move on to our next game. Uh, Starfield. Here we go. Let's see how optimized Starfield is with the new frame gen. I've tested this, I think on one other laptop. Harambe says, isn't OLED miles better in terms of response time? Um, I wouldn't call it miles better because three milliseconds for a mini LED is still extremely fast. Um, full, full measured response time OLED will still be better, but in terms of like actual gameplay, I don't know that anyone would ever be able to tell the difference between OLED and mini LED. Maybe pro gamers super competitive esports players but probably not even then i don't know um okay display render we're just gonna go custom preset ultra all right and we want 
DLSS quality frame generation on. I clicked it. Did it just crash? Starfield just crashed when we tried to enable frame gen. <laughs> Let's try again. OLED doesn't have smearing. I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say mini LED or IPS panel has bad smearing at all. It seems very crisp and clear and very responsive. OLED will be a little better though. Like, I, like, I just don't know whether it would be that noticeable side by side. Wolf, I mean, hopefully within a week here, I'll have the G14 or G16 and we can test it side by side. But like, for example, if you had an OLED 120 hertz, like on the G14 versus a 240 hertz IPS, I think the 240 hertz IPS will look better from like a smoothness perspective, but I could be wrong. Frame generation on. DLSS on quality. Ultra preset. All right. Smoody Woot. Man, it's been a hot minute watching your vids. Still have my Scar 15 with a 3070 and 5900 HX from 2021 recommended by you, and it's still kicking ass. That's a great laptop. That's still a great laptop. I mean, honestly, if I had that uh, laptop still, the only the only games that I would be like, I wish I had more FPS in that I've played at all recently is probably Starfield and Hogwarts Legacy. Those are the only two games where like DLSS frame gen really makes a huge difference. Um, okay, so here we are. Starfield, where this is where we do our test. I just started it. We're running. 136 FPS. This is such a better gaming experience than when this game launched. When the game launched, it was like we were doing 70 FPS. And now we're doing 125 because we have DLSS instead of FSR and frame gen, which then basically almost doubled our FPS again or gave us another huge boost to FPS. So... So yeah, the, at launch, Starfield, we would have got about like 60, 70 FPS in the same test. Now we're doing 123, 40. And visually, the gameplay feels so much better. It looks really good. I don't know. I love Starfield. I enjoyed my time playing Starfield a lot. I was lost in the Starfield universe for like a week and a half uh, until I, you know, I beat the game like four times, <laughs> the main storyline four times. And then it kind of got old and it's the kind of game I think I'll come back to whenever the next expansion comes out and I'll play through the next expansion. That's probably my, gonna be my Starfield experience. And then I'll probably play more side quests whenever the, the next expansion comes out. I'll probably be lost in the world again for like a week or something. Um, so very good, very good Starfield experience on the Scar 18, no issues there at all. Baldur's Gate 3, let's get into it. Baldur's Gate 3 won game of the year in 2023 absolutely an incredible game and i have not played baldur's gate 3 all the way through yet yet it's a game i am going to beat all the way through uh i don't know i have about 20 hours into the storyline or so um and uh i don't know it just didn't grab me as much mainly maybe because it's a turn-based game and the action combat is not as engaging as like a first person shooter for me, but it's good gameplay and really incredible storytelling. That's the main thing. Like the storytelling is awesome. The characters can change, they can evolve, you know, um, you can affect the storyline somewhat. Uh, there's a good reason why this got game of the year and let's just show no nudity for now. Um, Man, this display is how you play Baldur's Gate 3, though. It looks really good on this display. Oop, I did multiplayer. I did not mean to do multiplayer. You can play with up to four people in Baldur's Gate 3. But the main downside is it's going to be... Uh, you know, you have to wait your turn to play because your, your teammates will be taking their turns 
instead of you playing all the characters on the display, because you have a party, right, of like four or five characters and you can control those characters. Um, but not if you have teammates that are controlling their, their own characters. So, but it's great. It'd be a great way to play with friends, you know? It'd be really fun. Okay, we're gonna go ultra settings and then we gotta go DLSS on quality. It's weird how you have to set the settings in Baldur's Gate 3. Okay, so ultra preset, DLSS on quality, no, no um, V-Sync, 240 hertz refresh rate, We'll load into, I think, here is our save that we benchmark. Steven Ashley says, I have 300 hours in Baldur's Gate 3. Did you love it? Is it like super fun? Did you enjoy the end game? Like, I, lo I mean, I love my time. It's just, you know, I usually play closer into the character games more action oriented games. Like those are just more fun for me usually. Okay, all right, here we are. Ultra settings, DLSS on quality, hitting 250 FPS. Because this is turn-based and you jump scenes back and forth a lot, expect 1% low stutters on every single piece of hardware I've tested on this game so far. Um, that said, the more CPU juice you can push through the system, right now we're doing 75 watts, 80 watts, Usually the better the 1% low stutters are, it's, it's, it's playing very smooth right now. 50 for our 1% low is still good enough to have a smooth gaming experience. Notice that these stutters usually coincide as it changes turns with each character. Two hundred and twenty-three FP, uh, FPS right now, 38 for our 1% low. I mean, 37 right now. It's a very good gaming experience. You're not gonna have any problems playing Baldur's Gate 3 on ultra settings with this laptop, that's for sure. Probably not even native resolution. Native resolution is still gonna be excellent. I'm curious, if we turn off, if we turn off DLSS, do we get better 1% low performance? Let's just test that, because that's, that would not be surprised me, because DLSS kind of hits the CPU a little bit. But let's find out. Right now, 60 for our 1% low. Seems like it might be a little better. Our average FPS went down. Okay. I mean, we're still getting some jumps down to the 30s. But, yeah. So, I mean, overall, like, I feel like DLSS is still probably better to have on than to turn it off. But Baldur's Gate 3, like 220 FPS on average is gonna be phenomenal. Uh, last game, Witcher 3, and then we're gonna summarize everything that we found out so far today. Uh, we were not able to test the display or the fan noise or the speaker test. That'll need to be in a follow-up live stream because I don't have my tools with me. I packed them for CES and I'm not sure where they are right now in the middle of the live stream, so. Um, Harambe says the matte screen looks so washed out. I wish they used the Flow X16's glossy panel. Um, it doesn't look washed out to me. <laughs> you know, like we have brightness at 100% right now, but the display looks great to me. I mean, I also I have a, a light pointing down right at the display too. So if there's any washed outness, it's probably related to the camera and the way the lens is and the, the way the light's hitting the screen because it looks literally like perfect to me. All right, we're gonna ray tracing ultra, DLSS quality. And up the resolution, frame generation on full screen. Let's just double check that everything took. Looks good. All right, looks good. This 
Bernard's tale begins near White Orchard with my dear friend Gerald of Rivia seeking his lover of yours. Could you at least try an HDR video on YouTube? It supports HDR. Uh, Farouk Nen, I did test HDR enabled and disabled earlier in the live stream um, with HDR on, off, and I showed the three different um, display modes for the dimming zone. So you can do single zone, which is how we've been testing the laptop. Um, multi zones like balanced and then multi zone strong, which makes the peaks peaky white super super peaky bright um and when you're in hdr mode it has to be multi-zone strong by default so i i can switch it for you right now so we're in hd uh, we are in multi where i let me just double check we should be in single zone one zone backlight mode all right so that's what it looks like all right and we're gonna go to Multi-zone balanced. Notice that the darker regions of the screen are not as poppy. All right, that makes everything a bit less HDR looking, less poppy looking. You could probably see the brights a little bit better, maybe a little more balanced across the whole thing. And then multi-zone strong. Now, look, look at the clouds. They're so bright. It looks incredible. It looks like a super bright, vibrant HDR TV, basically. Um, and if we do one zone backlight, everything is more evenly lit. And I still think it looks super bright and poppy, but not quite as bright. Like the whites are not quite as peaky looking, but the darks are more easily seen. Like the details in the darks are more easily seen. So I like I like the one zone backlight the most out of the the this potential setup um so yeah okay so we're on ray tracing ultra everything else is on ultra frame generation is enabled and we're getting in the 90 fps range all right here we go for our fps test 105 FPS on average, 49 for our 1% low so far. Beautiful. So 116, 117, once we get to the shore on the other side here, it's the end of the test. Boom. So 117.56, obviously very playable, ultra settings, ray tracing, things are looking good. Uh, that said, I like this game without ray tracing more visually. That's just me being the not NVIDIA shill um, and being truthful as well. So, And that also boosts our FPS to make it look super smooth. So 117 up to 175 FPS and our 1% lows are also better turning off ray tracing. So, so yeah, that looks just phenomenal. And if you haven't played The Witcher 3, this is another must-play game in my, uh, if I were to review, like, top 10 games of all time. This would probably be in the top 10 games of all time ever made. So, 178, 86, without ray tracing. Sweet. So, let us... Let us summarize everything that we have found out about the laptop now. Um, before we do that, I know I don't have, I know I do not have the, um, the decibel meter in front of me, but I can still do a speaker test. All right. We'll put the laptop in performance mode and we'll do Peter Spacey Roar. Uh, and let me also just go into Dolby Access and let's just set it to dynamic. Make sure it's set to dynamic. So this is where you configure your audio settings. 
we go to dynamic for our audio settings. All right, and now we're going to go to Peter Spacey Roar. So uh, speakers are pretty good uh, still in 2024. I think they're the same speakers from 2023 as far as I know. They did not improve them as far as I know. Um, some solid bass in there, some decent mids, some decent highs. They're not as good as the Blade 18. They're not as good as some of the other uh, top-end speakers out there, like the ultra-premium ones. But they're definitely far above average, and they're better than the Strix G16 and G18. So a speaker upgrade compared to the mid-tier Asus laptops. Uh, let's do Half-Life by Faded Aeon. Here we go. These speakers do really well with that that nice bass drop in Faded A on Half Life. Um, I think Peter Spacey Roar. Like, I just feel like uh, this. I feel like the system needs a couple of tweeters, like a couple of extra tweeters to help the mids and highs be clearer, better audio sounding to me. Like the bass is pretty good. I feel like the bass. Like, I just they just need to make stronger bass, better mids and highs by a little bit and then we're gonna have like superb speakers in here like i said i, I could probably give them an 8.5 8.6 maybe maybe an 8.7 i don't know let's see your deuce williams love, love you like yeah so i mean this is going to be enough audio speaker wise to make, I think, the majority of people happy. Um, if you're just looking to casually listen to audio in your room, but it's not, it's not like, like, you know, for example, I edit videos for a living and I like my Blade 18 speakers because I could literally edit my videos in a quietish room just using the onboard speakers. And I feel like I'm getting the full audio experience without having to wear headphones. And like the, the, the Scar 18 is not quite to that level of loudness and clarity. Um, so that's kind of like, I guess my, when I'm comparing it to the Blade 18 experience I've had for so long, it's like a year now, and the Scar 18. The speakers are very good. Like casually gaming on the speakers are good. They're just not excellent. So yeah. All right. So let's, Go down the list and talk about everything we've discovered, all right? Uh, what's up and welcome to my final summary review of the SCAR 18. We are, uh, I am excited about this laptop, primarily because this has the best, the best 18 inch gaming laptop display, I think, in any laptop in 2024. Overall, because it's got uh, 1100 nits peak brightness, we did not get to measure it today because I don't have the tool with me right now. I packed it up for CES and I can't find it. Uh, but we're summarizing everything we did find out today, okay? There's a couple other things with the decibel meter that we couldn't test as well today, but I did test it, I think last year, or maybe I didn't test it last year at the time. I don't know. I, either way, we're gonna talk about everything we found out today. All right, so uh, price. I think it's $38.99 for this model. Pretty expensive for a, a 4090. 
but you're getting the best of the best in terms of display quality. The only type of display that might be arguably better is gonna be like a OLED display, but there's no 18 inch OLED displays. That'll be for 2025 probably, or maybe later this year, I don't know. Um, but this mini LED has 2048 dimming zones. The bloom, I don't think I noticed bloom at all in any of the tests today, but this laptop still has some bloom in extreme scenarios. And that's where OLED's a bit better without any bloom. OLED's also a little faster response rate, but it has screen burn in. Mini LED, 1100 nits peak brightness, can just get a little brighter than OLED can get. And the sustained brightness can also be a little brighter on this. Other thing about OLED, the brightness will tend to go down over time. It's not gonna stay at the peak brightness. Like after five years, OLED will slowly get dimmer and dimmer over the years. So that's another downside to OLED. Um, so when I, when I look at this laptop's specs, uh, versus the competition, right? So we're looking at the specs here. We've got, um, the SCAR 18, an i9 14900HX, 24 cores, 32 threads. We did not see any performance improvement because of the 14th gen that I noticed at all. We saw basically the same performance as the 13th gen. The main upgrades on this laptop the DDR5 is 5,600. Again, hard to see the performance difference between 4,800 and 5,600 unless you're doing very specific testing, but maybe slight performance improvements in certain titles, maybe like Hogwarts Legacy, for example. We had the most performance I've ever seen in Hogwarts Legacy. Um, it was very, very good performance there um, compared to last year, but that's primarily probably because of the devs of Hogwarts Legacy. Improving the optimization of their game is probably the biggest thing, or maybe NVIDIA drivers as well. Um, Maybe the 14th gen Intel may have helped in that too. I don't know. I it's hard to say that there's only one reason why the FPS was better in that game compared to last year, but probably all a combination of all those, but probably the biggest one is the dev optimization. Um, so we have 175 watt RTX 4090 in here. That's as powerful as it gets, but it is not like over juiced in the same way that like the Titan series usually is or like the XMG Neo 16, for example, with the water cooler, those are like overjuiced, like seriously overclocked compared to this. Like this is like great standard level performance for a 4090. Um, now in, uh, in terms of resolution, we've got 2560 by 1600 resolution, which is a great balance for an 18 inch display in my opinion. Most laptop displays in the 18 inch category, some of them at least are going to the 4K resolution, which I think is a little bit overkill, quite frankly. And I, I don't think that people need to go to 4K unless maybe you're doing graphical work or you're maybe you're just a AAA gamer. But either way, there's a lot of downsides to going to 4K. You have Windows application scaling issues. You also have, um, so by that, I mean like things would get really tiny if they're not scaled to the right way or scale well with Windows settings. It's gotten better over the years, but still can be an issue in certain applications. Um, the other thing is playing games, it's harder to pump out 4K frame rates. Now you could run it, just run the game at a lower resolution. It'll still look pretty good, but not quite as crisp as native probably would, would look. So then you also have upscaling, which can help a lot of new games too, because you can upscale from maybe like balanced or performance if you're at the 4K resolution and it just basically renders the same resolution that you would have rendered in QHD on quality anyway. So there's a lot of ways to work around the ultra high resolution that's not, gonna be a deal breaker for most games, at least most newer games out there. And older games probably would run at the higher resolution anyway with the power of the 4090 in it. So a ultra high resolution 4K display is not a bad thing. It's just, if you're running native or DLSS on quality, which is usually how I prefer to run it, then it's just easier to pump out high quality frames at QHD with DLSS on quality than 4K at DLSS on quality. So, um, and I, I prefer to play my games at like 90 to 100 FPS or more for the smooth fluidity, preferably in the 150 to 200 FPS with very high 1% lows is my ideal, especially for fast paced games. But slower paced games, I can understand, you know, having more stutters or more 1% lows that are like lower and you'll still be okay and still be happy with your overall gameplay. Anyway, so moving on, I like the QHD plus resolution. I love the display quality. I love the different uh, backlight 
options in here. You have HDR support for Windows games and videos. And I did show that earlier. Uh, I'll probably put that on the screen right now uh, in the final summary review edit. Um, we checked out the ports. We've got a Thunderbolt 4 and a USB-C. The Thunderbolt 4 goes to the Intel CPU. The USB-C goes to the NVIDIA CPU. So if you're doing display output directly, you probably want to use the uh, USB-C or the HDMI 2.1. Um, the ports on this otherwise are good, not great. And it's a little disappointing that there's so much internal space on the SCAR 18 and they did not really maximize the total number of ports on here. I feel like we could have had another USB-C or another USB-A and a full-size SD card slot uh, put on this chassis because there's a lot of room along the sides here that just weren't being utilized um, by the Asus engineering team. So that's one way they can improve the 2025 version of this laptop. Uh, for the BIOS, we went into the BIOS. You can undervolt in the BIOS. It's uh, not a, a major undervolt. You can only do 80 millivolt undervolt, which is still uh, helpful, um, but you don't have the other types of undervolting like the cache and the E cores. You just have the main P cores being undervolted by 80 millivolts. It's gonna help, but not as much as a full on undervolt. I'm not sure if you could use throttle stop to bypass all that or Intel XTU. That might be great option to cover for the optimization and overclocking guide for the SCAR 18 2024. Um, speaking of, if there's enough demand for it, I will try to get an optimization and overclocking guide for the SCAR 18 out as soon as I can. Now, uh, for the display nits and gamut and color contrast, mini LED is super contrasty. We know that this is rated for 1100 nits peak brightness. Sustained brightness is probably gonna be in the 500 to 600 range. Don't know for sure, cause they couldn't, couldn't test it today. But 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, this thing is an incredibly vibrant display. It's a really great display to game on. And I think it's a great display to do your editing as well. Like um, the, when you put it into single zone um, backlight for a mini LED, it just looks better than when you're in the strong uh, for at least for like trying to more accurately adjust for like uh, brightness and darkness of shadowy areas versus brighter environments. I just love that, that Asus gives you that option to switch it to the multi-zone strong versus single zone. I did show that multiple examples of that in the live stream today and definitely worth checking that out. Now for speakers, we tested them today and I think they're very good. I give them like an 8.6, uh, I think. They're above average. They're not, maybe an 8.7, I don't know. They're, they have they have some bass, but the mids and highs could definitely be better. The mids, highs, and lows, quite frankly, could all be better, um, but they're still above average. I feel like it's another area where Asus could easily improve this laptop because there is a lot of space on the inside of the laptop. We also only have a 90 watt hour battery in this, and there's not really any reason why they can't have a 99 watt hour battery in this. So I feel like they should add a 99 watt hour battery as well. We did not do fan noise testing because uh, they don't have the decibel meter and it'd kind of be pointless, but know that the, the fans on this, I have done detail testing in this in 2023 and the 2024 version is the same. You can get still very good performance on silent mode and even in performance mode, you can get almost max performance, but not quite. Turbo mode's obviously like a little bit of an overclock and manual mode, you can just adjust your power limits uh, and really let this machine fly. That said, in Cinebench R23, we did not have a very good CPU paste job in the liquid metal application here because it uh, we had two cores that were basically hitting thermal throttling much faster than the other cores on the CPU, which just reduced our potential Cinebench R23 performance. So, you know, we got, I think, 29,100 on the highest run, single run, and but we were averaging closer to 27,300, 400, maybe 500 after 10, 20, 10, 20 runs. So it was not that great. And it's certainly a weakness of this particular SCAR 18. I think most other SCAR 18s will perform a little better. Uh, on Cinebench R23 than this one. I think this one's actually underperforming. Now, the other thing about the 14th gen i9 is that there is no pre-baked silicon lottery. The, the 2023 version of the SCAR series had the best 13980HX. This has the 14900HX, which means that it's just gonna be like 
you don't know what the binning is going to be like. There might be significant variances between the high-end binning and the low-end binning of the 14th Gen i9-14900HX. And in that sense, if you don't care about the display quality and you just want to, this, this laptop because of the RGB implementation, the cooling, all that, you might as well go with the 13th Gen the you know 2023 version and save some money they should be able to find some of those on sale at some point the 2024 version though is to me all about the display upgrade because the mini led is awesome and it looks great it feels great to play with and it's incredibly vibrant it's definitely a better display than my blade 18 display uh especially in the blacks and in the peaky brights it just looks more contrasty and more uh arcadially awesome i guess is what i will say um arcadely awesome i don't know if that's right it's just more saturated better contrast better brights it just looks like a better display i wish my blade 18 had it like this display is better than the blade 18 display not by a huge margin the blade 18 display is still great it's just mainly the biggest difference i would say is the darks like the, the the blacks on my blade 18 just look you can see a slight haze of gray over the black areas on the display and on this you just don't you get perfect blacks with the mini led so i love that um aside from the bloom of course that's the only issue um i'm not sure if i can show you the bloom i would actually love to sh see if we can do the blacks do i have the black image Let me see if I can pull up. Here it is. Uh, and we'll switch camera for a second. So we'll see if we can pick up any bloom here. So we'll take this away. We'll put that there. I can barely see the bloom around the hand do you see the slight halo effect but with my with my human eyes i almost don't see the bloom the camera i would say the camera picks up the bloom a little bit more um that's that's more the exposure i guess what the human eye sees if you blow it out you know, blow the camera exposure up really high. It makes it a little bit worse. Um, and let me see if, is the brightness on the screen? Yeah, the brightness on the screen is not quite all the way up either, so. So yeah, I mean, the, the bloom is, I think, less noticeable with the double zones, the 2048 zones, but it is still there. It is still, there is still some bloom to the mini LED display. It's not completely gone. Um, well, you can see zooming in here. Like around here, like it's a bright object on a dark background and you can, I don't, I'm trying to notice any bloom at all. I can't notice any bloom. It just looks great. Um, so even with the white mouse, it, the bloom is so minimal. Um, let's try switching the zone mode to multi-zone strong. Maybe that'll make the bloom worse. I still don't hardly see the bloom anymore. Like it's, it is legitimately so much better than it used to be. Compared to the SCAR 16 from last year, the bloom is just, it's much improved on the 20, uh, 24 SCAR 18. So, um, so yeah, let's talk gaming performance. Let's talk gaming performance in each of the games um, and Cinebench R23. So Cinebench R23 got uh, like 27,400. Time Spy got 21,700 with 17,200 or so, I think for the CPU score. The time spy score is good. It's like average for an RTX 4090 that's a full power uh, with a slight overclock. And, uh, but it's not as good as the ultra high performance machines that are basically overjuiced. 
The Apex Legends gameplay was excellent. Perfect for what I would expect a 4090 with an i9 to do with great temps. Power World was very good performance. On, on the highest settings, we were getting, without DLSS, like around 90 to 100 FPS. With DLSS on quality, we're basically frame capping to 120, which is the maximum FPS in Power World. As far as I know, there might be a way, a, some kind of command to make the Power World FPS go higher. I'll have to learn it, see if I can for the next testing. Counter-Strike 2 was excellent. Very high settings. We were doing 250 to 300-ish FPS most of the time. Felt great to play it. Um, very smooth. Alluvium, we were getting good FPS, except for when assets were loading in. There was like some stutters and judders around that, but it played it great overall, like into the hundreds of FPS, like over 100 FPS most of the time in arena. It was like 170 FPS, 180 FPS. Um, God of War, we did, I think 125 FPS with like 50 or four 1% low. I feel like 1% low could be better, but um, I think that's primarily due to the CPU power limit being a little bit lower. I don't know. Some of the other laptops we tested and the memory speed also not being quite as high. I don't know. It's the, the God of War performance was still very, very good. 125, 125 FPS on ultra settings, QHD resolution with DLSS on quality. I mean, it's going to be a great experience playing God of War on this. Cyberpunk 2077, we did 100 FPS, 101 with ray reconstruction enabled, uh, our ray tracing on ultra. Cyberpunk 2077 has been going through a lot of patch changes. We've seen higher FPS benchmarks in the past, but because of all of these updated ray tracing and everything, like we've seen as high as 145 FPS in Cyberpunk in the benchmark, but that was before all the patch changes and updates, so it's kind of hard to compare apples to apples. Um, Hogwarts Legacy, huge dev optimization. We were doing... Uh, I think 150 to 160 FPS in the benchmark at the end, but we were doing up to 180 FPS in Hogsmeade, and our 1% low was also like in the 50, 60 range. Last year when we tested Hogwarts Legacy, it was like 90 FPS to 100 FPS or so with like 25 for our 1% low, which is awful. So we doubled our 1% lows, more than doubled it in Hogwarts Legacy. And it's just... Uh, Hogwarts Legacy felt so much better. Uh, Dead Space had basically the same issue as last year. Very high CPU temps, very high performance, but still not the best performance we've ever seen in Dead Space. 125 FPS for Dead Space was very good. Starfield, huge performance upgrade, around 125 FPS. Again, with frame gen and DLSS now enabled in Starfield, extremely playable, even on ultra settings. Fantastic. Baldur's Gate did 220 FPS approximately in the over 200 with DLSS enabled. Some stuttering with 1% lows is expected in Baldur's Gate 3 because of all of the jumping around and turn-based camera moving very quickly. Um, very good gaming experience with ultra settings with Baldur's Gate 3. Witcher 3 also very good FPS. Uh, I think in the 117 FPS range for our average with ray tracing enabled. Turning off ray tracing gets us into the 170s for our FPS. So Witcher 3, obviously going to be a great gaming experience as well on this laptop. Basically everything, everything we played was fantastic gaming experience. Temperatures, very good in the gaming as well. Like very rarely did we see any temperatures above 80 for the CPU or GPU with the exception of CPU temps in dead space. That one, the CPU temps went up into the 90s and occasionally hit the thermal throttle limit. Um, but that's, I don't know, it's dead space. Dead space does that to a lot of laptops. Uh, and overall, I think this laptop is an excellent laptop in so many ways. It's just not really the ultimate in terms of performance. It's very good performance. It's got the ultimate in terms of RGB design if you're a gamer. It's got the ultimate in terms of display quality if you're after a super bright, vibrant display. Um, in terms of CPU performance, it's very good CPU performance, but it's not the ultimate in CPU performance either. We definitely have seen higher CPU performance from some of the other laptops, especially for the ones that you can undervolt larger with larger undervolts, basically. Um, Control software, I would say, is excellent on here. Armory Crate overall has worked really well. 
The only exception right now is that the laptop is bugged and we're just on blue RGB only. We can't get rainbow mode to work properly. Probably got to install or update a driver. Um, and then one of the users in the chat also said they had the same problem with not being able to control the RGB. So I think it's probably a system-wide kind of issue right now. The Asus needs to get updated on all the Asus laptops. Uh, but I'm confident Asus will update that. Asus has been very good, generally speaking, about updating their drivers, software, BIOS, all automatically through Windows updates and through uh, the Armory Crate, just doing the update center in the Armory Crate. So overall, can I recommend the SCAR 18? Yes, absolutely. But particularly, I'm going to recommend it for people who love a gamery design, RGB out the wazoo, and the most vibrant, bright 18-inch mini LED display. And... Yeah, I think it's just a fantastic display. So if you're after the best 18 inch laptop display with a gamery look, the SCAR 18 is probably the best laptop for you in 2024, probably, I think. I mean, there's obviously the Legion 9, very, very competitive, very, very good laptop as well. That would probably be the other laptop I would say to take a look at besides this, but I'd say that laptop has a higher resolution which I think this fits into more the sweet spot. And that's only a 16 inch laptop as well, instead of 18 inch. So if you're after the big screen quality experience, this is currently probably the best in terms of mini LED display quality. Of course, the Blade 18 is coming out later this year with a 4K 165 Hertz. And you also got the MSI Titan 18 HX with also a mini LED display, but only 1024 dimming zones. So you're going to have more bloom on the Titan than on this. Most likely haven't tested that yet. Um, but, uh, this costs way less than the Titan 18 HX. So in terms of value, this is going to be better. Um, overall, of course, this is not the best value laptop out of any of them. The probably the Legion pro series or the Omen 17 is probably where the most value is in terms of just bang for your buck in the 4080 and 4090 series. You also have the MSI Vector if you're after um, a mid-tier as well from MSI. So there's a lot of options this year, so many new laptops. And if you're feeling lost and you want to see what laptops hit your price range, uh, please check out my laptop list, which is linked in the description down below. Uh, this has all the new laptops for 2024. Uh, and a whole and a dedicated section right here for 2024 laptops. All, all the new ones are here if you're looking to shop around for pricing, estimated benchmarks, um, where you can buy them, when when you can buy them, as well as a top deal section if you're after someone who's if you're someone who's just after getting the most bang for the buck. If your budget's only a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars, then keeping an eye on this top deal section is where you want to be for getting the best deal on a gaming laptop in 2024. So that's it for my review for now of the SCAR 18. I need to do a follow-up live stream with the SCAR 18 where I have my display testing tool, my sound decibel tool. Um, overall, great laptop. Definitely, definitely worth considering if you like a plasticky build as well as you want the brightest probably the best quality 18 inch display so far in 2024. That's a QHD plus resolution, you know, not discounting the Titan 18 HX or maybe the Acer Predator 18. The both, all, both of those also have mini LED displays. I think this is the best blend of everything. Yeah. For the upper mid range tier under $4,000 by over $3,000. And you want something that's, suitably premium. I just, the ways in which Asus can improve this, better RGB backlighting on the keyboard, Windows Hello implementation, more ports on the side, better speakers, and a 99 watt hour battery. And then if they could upgrade this to CNC milled aluminum chassis, I think they would make this better. If they made those six changes for 2025, this would probably be contender for laptop of the year in my book probably, and ho hopefully a better quality webcam while they're at it. So let me check chat and uh, answer any questions from chat. And then that'll be the live stream for today. Okay. Okay. Now your business says Razer 16 OLED seems fine, but burn in is a win, not if. 
2000 dimming zones, mini LED seems good too. Razor lacks the RJ45. The Scar 18 has three fans instead of. Uh, yeah, the Razor 16 has two fans. Blade 18 has three fans. The way I see it is if you want a mini LED display and you are buying a mini LED laptop for productivity, choose the SCAR 18 2024 model as it has the multi-zone and single zone dimming switch. It makes a big difference to the image quality for sure, having that dimming switch. Um, and I think it, like compared to a laptop that does not have the dimming zones switch, like it is a huge visual difference switching to the multi-zone versus a single zone. Uh, I, I think it, I'm really glad Asus included that. A1 Gaming says, hey, man, I want to know something. If I have $3,500, what is the best laptop to buy with the Ryzen 7945HX3D processor? I, as far as I know, A1 Gaming, the SCAR 17 is your only option for that particular processor. Um, unless some new ones came out that I'm not aware of. But uh, But yeah. Real says, if my Legion Pro 5 from 2021 didn't have a keyboard that was collapsing, I'd wait until next year for the NVIDIA 5000 series. Oh, that sucks. The keyboard is collapsing? Interesting. I wonder if that's something that you could fix by maybe reinforcing the keyboard, opening it up and reinforcing it. I don't know. Um, Slice of bread says, so is this worth buying for something? Uh, is this worth buying for, for something new or wait for 5,000 series? So slice of bread, the performance in the 4,000 series, in my opinion, is absurdly good. Um, and realistically, a 4090 is almost overkill for the vast majority of games. And RTX 4080 can play all the games on ultra settings currently um, quite well. So... In, in one sense, I'm like, yeah, of course the 5000 series will be better, but it's more about does this laptop have the feature set you want? Does it meet the design requirements that you really want? Um, like I said, there's there's a number of ways that the, the SCAR 18 could be improved, but it's still an excellent laptop overall. Um, Dennis Barbu says, will you do a SCAR 18 2023 versus SCAR 18 2024? Let me give it to you right now. Um, SCAR 18 2023, from a value perspective, it'll almost for sure be cheaper. So it wins in the value department, especially since there's no real hardware upgrade overall. Like it's the CPU is almost the exact same speed. The GPU is the same speed. The display is still excellent, but it's not mini LED. So the primary difference between the SCAR 2023, 2024 is just the mini LED display um and that from a performance perspective at least in my test so far there's almost no difference from a performance perspective at all even the memory speed and the intel 14th gen just didn't do enough to even notice really as far as i can tell the dev optimization from the games made more of a difference probably than the 14th gen versus 13th gen um if you already have a 40 series high powered GPU, you should not be buying a new laptop. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. If you've got 3000 series or older, maybe worth considering upgrading, but realistically, even 3000 series is still quite good uh, in the vast majority of games out there. Uh, I would say if you have RTX 2000 series or older, like a 2070 or older is really where you're gonna see the massive performance gains. Even an RTX 2080 is still going to be able to play the vast majority of games quite well. Um, so that's my at least take for right now. But I would say the biggest upgrade from those older laptops to the newer laptops, the display quality, the design differences going to 16 by 10 aspect ratio and the build quality, some of that stuff is a bigger difference than the internal hardware, um, depending on the game. Um, a one says, I have a question. If you have good enough skills, can you change the VRAM on a laptop GPU? Like, is it possible? Not really. No, I don't think so. Cause you'd have, you know, you have to have your whole VBIOS and software. You have to be able to redesign the VBIOS and all that other stuff too. So unless you've got software programming skills to hack the NVIDIA VBIOS plus crazy hardware schools, I don't think you'll be able to do that. Um, Parky says, hey, Brandon, to answer your question about the cooling solution on a vapor chamber and a three-fan cooling solution is good or not, 
I can tell you, yes, it's amazing. The Acer Predator Triton 17X has it. Uh, none of the MSI has G-Sync. I wanted the Titan, so I don't know, Rick. Yeah, none of the MSI has G-Sync, though I don't think it makes too big of a difference in most titles unless you're hitting sub-60 FPS, which on a 4K display, you might hit sub-60 FPS more often. Um, Simply Carrying says, how do you feel about the ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition? Should I upgrade... Should I upgrade from this laptop? So the ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition is a very good laptop. It had a good display and a, and a good amount of power in it. I did review it. Uh, but, I mean, the newest titles like Starfield, you probably are turning down settings if you want to get more than 60 FPS. Um, so it depends on if you want to play the newer titles. Like if you're just like a CSGO player or a Valorant player, the G15 Advantage Edition is fantastic. You don't really need to upgrade at all. Um, you know, so it just depends on what games you play. If you want to play the newest titles, latest and greatest titles, then uh, that would be a pretty big upgrade going to the scar 18 from the G 15 advantage edition. So, um, but that's, it just depends on the games you plan to play. If you're okay with playing on medium and low settings for now, you can keep the G 15 advantage edition for another year or two and see what they come out with in 2025. Um, that's probably what I would do if I was on a budget. If you have, extra money laying around of course an upgrade would be noticeable for sure from that laptop to now um la1 gaming says hey how much do you think the new prices are going to go down on the 4000 series after the 5000 series comes out uh well we've already seen the prices come down on the 4000 series a lot since launch last year um like big sales this last year and right now like i said if you're looking for the best sales check out my laptop list because there's a ton of deals right here at the top uh, like these laptops this victus with a 4060 this was like 1200 bucks 1100 bucks when it came out and it's 779 now so that came down like 500 bucks same for the legion 5 and the g14 550 dollars off it was 1599 there was almost no sales on it now it's 550 dollars off so these are the deals i think to take advantage of uh if you're after uh getting a deal right now because also, you know, those laptops are not going to be on sale like that forever. They're going to eventually sell out and then it'll be the 2024 models only unless like an Asus, you know, Asus did say they're going to continue making in the 2023, 4080 and 4090 variants. So there's certain models that will continue on and then will not, like they will not sell out during 2024. But some of the other ones that are being replaced, eventually they probably will sell out and, or at least the the deal prices will definitely go away eventually. Uh, but it might take through Black Friday of this year before that happens. So um, I we've seen the prices kind of stabilize since November-ish. And maybe honestly, the prices have come up just like 100 bucks, 200 bucks, maybe compared to the best sales, holiday sales prices. It's usually what happens. Um, and the fact that there's been no new RTX 5000 series or even... 4080, 4090 Ti's or 4090 Supers or anything. I think that means that laptop prices will probably stabilize until new laptop GPUs come out, especially since the Intel 14th gen is like a nothing burger. So 13th gen laptops are basically just as good as they were a year ago at this point. The, you know, you want to get a Blade 18, it's still going to cost you pretty much the same amount to get the same speed laptop, almost, maybe a few hundred dollars less. So realistically, we had the big come down in the first six to eight months of the 4,000 series coming out. And now the laptop prices have flattened um, for the last, I don't know, three, four months and maybe gone up a little bit since holidays. And I'm expecting them to flatten probably. We'll have some sales continue for 2023 models. And those would probably be the main ones that might go down a little bit more. Uh, for the next six months and eventually sell out. And then you'll just have 2024 models eventually. But uh, but yeah, if you're looking to upgrade, I primarily would recommend upgrades for RTX 2000, 2070s or lower, um, probably mainly. and Or just if you need a new laptop or the game you're trying to play doesn't get enough FPS, uh, then those are the times to upgrade for very specific use cases. Um, Maybe frame gen enabled games where a 4000 series would just produce way more frames. Um, okay. Any more laptops to announce the RX 7900 
dedicated GPU or is it dead in the water? Uh, Baka, we're going to retest that Alienware M18 with the 7900M. If it does test better in the follow-up, maybe uh, maybe some other laptop manufacturers will, will put it out there. It also needs to be cheaper than a 4080 as well. It can't be more expensive than an RTX 4080 or it's going to be dead in the water anyway. So, okay. When is 4080 super coming for gaming laptops? Uh, I don't know that we'll even ha ever have that. We might end up with RTX 5000 series in 2025, just going straight to 5000 series. I don't know. It's weird. First time NVIDIA is doing this. We don't know. Maybe they'll come out with the 4080, 4090 super. I don't know. In June or something. I don't know. It's, it's weird. I, I don't think so though. As far as I know, that's not happening. The new G14 4070 or last year's ZenBook Pro 4070. Massive L, if it was my money, as cool as the new OLED display is, I need like a 4080 or 4090 in my laptop. So I'd probably go with the G14 4080 or 4090. Um, just because I, I need the more I need more graphics power than a 4070 can provide. Um, the other option I would maybe consider if I needed something more portable would be like a G16 4090. But um, I'm happy with how, my, how portable my Blade 18 is with a 4090. It's very portable and it's a huge display. I like it. So it's a great combination. Why not, why not have a bigger display and have portability? That's why I went with the Blade 18. So, All right, last question. A. Flores says, would a 4090 laptop be good for streaming or some lower tier GPU be good enough? The Slim 15 OLED interests me. So for streaming, it all depends on what kind of... Uh, I would say for streaming, your CPU is almost going to be more important than your GPU, depending on the game, because you need to have a, enough cores in your CPU to be able to handle the stream encoding while you're playing the game smoothly with good 1% lows. Um, so I would go for a high powered HX processor. Um, I've heard the new AI chips can help improve streaming encoding, offloading that from the CPU. So those chips might be good, like the Ultra 9 uh, or Ultra 7 might be good for streaming and gaming at the same time without the streaming impacting your gaming performance. So we'll have to see. But uh, okay, that's it for the live stream for today. Thank you so much for everyone that tuned into the live stream. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We'll see you in the next one. I'm going to try to live stream tomorrow with the new dual 4K ultra wide. So 8K by 2K ultra wide resolution monitor with the SCAR 18 tomorrow. Um, and that'll be a Best Buy sponsored live stream. So that'll be interesting to check out. It's a huge box. So it's going to be a huge monitor. I think it's even bigger than the one behind me. I hope it fits on my desk. Anyway, see you in the next one. Brandon. Out.